because I, but whenever I come back, I, I wanted to, to just have some information that way we could cut to the chase and make something happen. Can I ask you just I can't, a I can't. Text me the questions and I'll text you the answers, right? Because I got to go right now. I'm still doing stuff right here and I really want to focus on getting my business organized. Okay. Happily will answer you. Just text me any questions you have and I'll try to get you the answers back, okay? Beautiful. Let, let me just ask you this before you go. I know you're really busy. I can tell in the background. If if you and I can come to an agreement and 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 I and I can get you an offer that makes sense, how soon are you willing to move forward? What's the next step for us? Tomorrow. Beautiful. All right. I'll talk to you uh, Tuesday at ten thirty. I'll text you right now. All right, Ashley. Bye. That personality type, guys. That personality type is badass. Those are. That's I love a, it. Guy. That's a numbers guy. That's a cut straight to the chase guy. Get right to the money. Facts. Cool. You bring facts to the table with a seller like that, and you're going to just create crazy amounts of traction. I'm telling you. Like so, so, so based on, based on what you just showed me, Q, on the MAO, he said, I owe 330 If I can get 330 I'll walk right now. I ask him if you and I can come to an agreement, and I have in mind what he told me at the beginning of the conversation, 330 he'll walk right now. Depending on how much work the property needs, um, I mean, regardless, that's a bomb subject too. That is. Right? I mean, the ARV on it is, is what, five something? It's a whole building, bro. It's crazy. Like the, the Jersey market is wild. Let me show you what, what, what it is that we're making an offer on. It's this building in the middle in front of this tree. This is it right here. So like these types of like these types of properties, they got basements. You know what I mean? You see how crazy this is? <laughs> that little thing is worth five hundred thousand, bro. That's wild. That's wild. That is crazy. All right, that's love right there. I don't even. I don't even think. Um, is Maurice even on here? Maurice, no, I don't think he's here. I don't think he's, he's not here. even on here. I'm I'm about to lock up dude's deal. <laughs> we'll are, you, are, we'll are you here hey low key low key if maurice is not here and i lock <laughs> this deal up if he's not hey. here and i lock this deal up i'm gonna i'm gonna tell him hey bro i'm still gonna give this to you but but uh but i i am gonna ask him for for uh a referral fee <laughs> Yo, they said that's a hot area 20 minutes from manhattan let's go hey cole richardson man uh send that uh send that lead you said this in richmond bro I like this one right here. I, I really want to see if we're able to get this. Check this one out. This one's in our backyard. Um, that's it, mahogany. That, yeah. that's, maho that's mahogany, bro. Yup, yup. Let, let's try that. Let's try that. Mahogany, we're going uh, we're gonna, to we're gonna lock that up for you. You see this one in the comments? You want to you wanna grab it real quick or you want to pass oh. it? I mean, I, I feel, I'm not going to lie. I feel like a superhero after, after that, that call that hey, I just did. Hey, you get one more. Hey, you hey, get one more. You, you want me to go ahead and, and get this, this next one? Yeah. All yeah, right, no. bet, bet, bet. All right, all right, Mahogany. So I'm going to run it. So let me just read it. Uh, his name is Juan. We got the address. The situation is home in pre-foreclosure, uh, postponed due to COVID. Uh, it's a 4-2. He thinks it's worth 210. The comps say 181. Previous offer of 90, 99 was pissed. He has an autistic son, wants to save the home, may not be able to uh, dig in deeper. He paid an attorney to save him, but it was a scam. The attorney never received the money, said they never received the money. Damn, this is- Or took steps. He owes a friend 6K for money borrowed to pay the lawyer. Oh my God. Oh my God. Hey Q, while, while I'm calling this one, can you can you help me with the uh with the comps? I'm already on it. Let's get it. Love. All right, mahogany. This is in seven eight two five zero two, bro. This area is subject to city. I don't know right, if you beautiful. want to pitch it, but I'd I'd love the opportunity to get on the phone with them and we close it together. All right, bet bet. Let me let me uh let me hit dude up right now. Boom. His name is Juan Benavides. Two five five. 8137 Yo, is he that motivated? You you hear that mahogany? Is that right? It was the exact number 2102558137 
If you, you want, I can skip trace him real quick. Can you? And, and we can even do that. Uh, we we uh, you could do that while Keith is hopping on his next one. But uh, but Mahogany, are you sure that's the number? The number that I just called was two one zero two five five eight one thirty seven for Juan Benavides. And uh, and and that's not going to be a true people search skip trace. Uh, I think you you got TLO right, Q. Yes, sir. I'm on it right now. That's not uh, Eric. That's not true people search, big dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Juan Benavides, I got this. Is, is it on me now? Yeah, yeah. Go go ahead, bro. Um, go ahead, uh, cause Q's gonna skip trace it. And uh, and and mahogany, we're gonna we're gonna work on 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 getting that one done for you. Unless mahogany, you can come up with a a different number or a new number. Okay. So I'm looking at one right here. I'm gonna go left field. Uh, let's see. I see one in Michigan right here. Let's see. Here, go right here. Eric, I, I don't know how Q has access to TLO, but I'm um, um, kind of pissed that he hasn't told me that he has access to it. And then also, it's it's real difficult, bro. It's real difficult that that to to be able to get access. So not everybody is just walking around with TLO access. So so maybe that's something we could talk about a little later. All right, somebody call this one. Please press one to connect to step. Uh, Donna Cohen. Has a voicemail bottom. Call her back again. Please. Miss Donna. Sorry, the person you were trying to reach has a voicemail box that has not been done. Try one more time. Let's go. Let's go. Find me another one just in case you don't answer. The person you were trying to reach has a voicemail box that has not been. On to the next. All right, what else we got? Let's see. It's a whole bunch. All right, let's check this one out. Augusta, Georgia. Aaron? Yes, sir. I got a, I got a Georgia number. Those are all the numbers that I was able to pull. Oh, snap, you got it? It could be relatives, too, because I pulled relatives. In the, uh, in, the, in the messenger chat or here? Messenger. Beautiful. Yo, Q, stop holding out, dog. Just let me know if you got a really big lead, because that shit just cost me like a buck 25. <laughs> We'll split. We'll split costs on it. It's not a big deal. I'm just saying, if you ever need like one of those deep searches, I got you. Because we do that too for a few properties. It's expensive, right. but it's worth it. Yeah. 
Mahogany, that's love right there. He just paid, and he probably wasn't even going to tell us that he paid for that trash. Can I help you? Hey, how you doing today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, just wanted to give you a quick call. I actually was looking to speak to Mr. Dominic. Uh, you actually spoke to, I'm sorry, not Mr. Dominic. Yeah, I spoke to my partner, Mr. Dominic, and I was looking for Mr. William about the property that he owns. Okay. That's yes, sir, Mr. William. How your day going so far? Fine, sir. What can I do for you? Yes, sir. So, a uh, quick thing. Uh, my partner, Mr. Dominic, he's actually in acquisitions. I'm actually one of the finance managers for the company. And I uh, actually wanted to call and just get about five to 10 minutes of your time. I want to speak to, about this property on Silverdale Road. You have about five to 10 minutes? Um, yeah. I'm probably to get back to you. Yes, yeah, sir. And like I said, man, I just wanted to see, you know, it's a lot of stuff going on right now. You know, I just wanted to just speak to you for a quick second to see if there's anything I can add value to you on and just try to see if I can give you a cash offer right now. Uh, like I said, I just wanted five minutes of your time. I don't want to take up too much of your time today. I understand it's Saturday and you're probably with the family, but I just wanted to see if we can just speak for a few moments. That's it. Uh, this is your personal number you're calling from? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. I actually called for my personal sale. Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, we, we both know, man, currently we're quarantining right now. We're not currently in the office. So uh, I'm giving you a call from a yeah, good number yeah. that you can always reach me on. And uh, like I said, man, I wouldn't okay. want to call I'll, them. I'll, I'll have to get back to you. I'll have to get back to you. Uh, I'd like to say uh, I'm at home and I'm with family and we're taking care of some personal, personal to, stuff right to, now. To, and, uh, I'd like to get back with you. Too. Yes, sir. I totally understand that. I, I wouldn't want you to do it any other way. Let me ask you this before I let you go. And I'm just curious about this. Uh, that property that you do own on Silver uh, Silverdale, are you possibly still interested in selling it? I want to make sure I get my notes correct, uh, just in case I'm out of the office at the moment and one of my guys have to give you a call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we still uh, interested in selling it, but uh, we're trying to wait out this uh, flowers situation and see how it's going to land with everybody. And, uh, yes, sir. Then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get serious about it. Yes, sir. That. And I totally understand that. I'm going to give you some... I, I want to give you some quick insight, uh, real quick. We're meeting. It looks like we are heading towards a recession. So, uh, I'm not trying to put any urgency on you or anything like that, but, uh, you know, to still get as much as you can for the property, this is actually a great time right now to liquidate it if you can, because probably about 30 days from now, you know, uh, property values are predicted to go down by 10 to 20%. So, like I said, I totally understand you with the family right now. I won't want you to do anything else, but, you know, spend time with the family. But, I mean, what is a better time that I can give you a call so we can discuss all the details, and I want to see if I can add value to you? No, I just, I just need about 15 or 20 minutes to take care of this, and I'll, I'll be able to probably call you back at this number. Say no more. So what I'll do is I'll even give you about 30 minutes, and uh, I'll probably just uh, get the family something to eat real quick, and then I'll give you a call, okay? All right, thank you so much. You have a blessed day, man. Stay safe. Thank you. All right, no problem. All right, we'll keep it rocking. We'll just keep Yo, it rocking. Keith, man, I, 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 love, I love Keith, man, because he, his style, his style is so cool, but he's incredibly aggressive. Like, he's aggressive, but it's not like, it's not offensive. You know what I mean? I, I love that. I love that, man. It's kind of like humbly aggressive. That's what somebody told me one time. Yeah, uh, it's, he, it's, it's, nice it's aggressive, him, but it's kind of like still, you know, keeping it cool. Yeah. And guys, did you notice? Did you, did, did, oh. did you know? Did you notice how he he educated him a little bit? He said, he said, "Hey, look, I'm I'm not even really trying to put urgency on you, but yeah. it is good for you to know, Mr. Seller, with everything that's going on right now, prices are predicted to drop anywhere from ten to fifteen to twenty percent in the next thirty days. So if you are looking to liquidate, now is the time to do it. And then and then and then I noticed how the next time the seller spoke, his tone was a little bit different. It was like. 15 minutes. All right, yeah. 15 minutes. I'll be yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that. Because because real quick, you know, and you know what we, we try to tell everybody that's on here, you know, you, you gotta you gotta paint a picture to the seller of the advantages and disadvantages that they got if they don't sell the property. Because they don't know themselves. 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and you notice what I said, uh, we actually had a corporate meeting, man, about, you know, uh, you know, about what's about to go on. We're headed towards a recession. I just want to let you know, man, property values are predicted to drop 10 to 20 percent in the next 30 days. And I just want you to be able to get the absolute most that you can out the property right now. So, yep. so yeah. So let's go on. Let's keep it rolling, man. Let's, let's, let's see what we got. All right. There's so many leads in here. I see another one right here. Let's see. And he's not lying. Said. He's not lying, by the way, y'all. And and our market in San Antonio, our hard money lenders have dropped. The one, the ones that are still loaning right now have dropped from from seventy five cents on the dollar to sixty five cents on the dollar. That's going to affect how our investors are working. So that affects what we can contract at. So even though they might not see this reflected in Zillow yet, that's that's actually what has already happened. So Keith is talking about thirty days, but that's already happening, right? Like right now in our market. Yes, sir. So I'm getting ready to call this other guy right here from Indianapolis. Please leave your message for nine. Oh yeah, they might answer next time. They 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 cut me short. They cut me <laughs> short. Please leave your message for nine four nine. Try them again. It might answer mad, but we get it right. We get it together. Please leave your message for nine. Damn, I thought it was gonna answer. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. All right. Call down. Let's call this person. Where they at? All right. Let's do it. Baltimore. Oh, here you go. Here you go, y'all. Let's go. Hey, it's Keith speaking. How can I help you today? Yes, can I just miss a call for you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How you doing? Sound like you're having a pretty good day over there, man. How's Saturday been starting off for you so far? Uh, sorry, who this? Yes, sir. I knew you was going to ask that question. So, yeah, man, my name is Keith. Uh, you actually spoke to one of my partners, uh, one of the acquisition guys named Amari. Uh, I'm actually one of the finance managers for home. You call about this property. Oh, I sold that two weeks ago. Wow. Oh, man. Did you, did you get the price that you absolutely was looking for? Yes, I did. Okay, man. That's great. Let me ask you this before I let you go. Uh, was that the only property that you currently still have? Are you looking to liquidate any more properties? Uh, yeah, I, I've totally liquidated. Okay. All right. No problem, man. Well, I want to definitely uh, congratulate you on selling your property, and uh, I want you to stay safe out here, man. No problem. Thanks. Be well. All right. Have a blessed day, sir. Urgency. Dang. Urgency, urgency, urgency. That's why I got to be following up, man. That's important right now. That's important. So, yeah, fellas. I mean, I can get one more in, man, if y'all, you know, it's on y'all. You know, whatever we need to do. Let's do it so we get, like, a full conversation. Let me get one more in. I'm just going to dial it quick then. I ain't even going to take that long then. We're going to do it right now. Give me one second. While you're doing that, hey, Maurice, did you, did you uh, hear the conversation I had with your seller? Did you hear that conversation, bro? Oh, damn. It was a deal in You uh, missed it. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Uh, it's a deal, bro. It's a solid deal. Solid, solid deal, bro. It says you, uh, <laughs> you offered 320, and we got the value on that thing, like, close to almost 600. It's a dumb deal. It's in New Jersey, too. I, I hope we're this the, my, the right Maurice, too. But you know, I'm hey, like, how you doing today? <laughs> yes, ma'am. This is Keith for Hometown Cash Buyers. How's the day going for you so far? Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, actually, I was giving you a call. Uh, one of my partners, her by the name of Taisha, uh, she actually seen the property. She had spoke to you about the property at 835 North uh, Graham Avenue in Winston. Uh, are you still possibly interested in selling that property? Hello? Yes, yes. How you doing today, Hello? sir? Hey, how you doing? Yeah, yeah. What's going on, man? 
Yes, sir. I just want to give you a quick call real quick. I hope I didn't catch you guys at a bad time. Uh, you guys. Yeah, yeah. I, I, how the Saturday going for you so far, man? You guys having a pretty good day? Yeah, it's going good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I actually was giving you a call. Uh, my name is Keith. I'm actually one of the finance managers uh, and co-owners of Hometown Cash Buyers. I was giving you a call about this property at 835 North Graham Avenue. Yes, sir. I was calling to see uh, where you guys possibly still interested in selling that property. Uh, I actually just sold my last property and I had a couple funds to liquidate right now. And uh, I, I just wanted to give you guys a call to see if you got about five to 10 minutes. Just want to get a little bit more information on the property if you had a chance. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Like yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, uh, and, uh, and don't mind me asking, uh, who do I have the pleasure of speaking with right now? Uh, the son-in-law of the owner. Okay. Is this Mr. Flores? That's my father-in-law. Okay. He, you know, he don't talk really good English. So. Well, speaking of your father-in-law, let me ask you this before we get the process started. Are you the only uh, decision maker on the property? I just want to make sure I'm not stepping on anybody else's toes. I want to make sure that I'm speaking no, it's, to everybody. It's him and his wife. It's him and his wife. It's their house. Okay. So if we was able to reach an agreement yeah. today, uh, would you have to run a path uh, past him and his wife or how would the process get started? Mm -hmm. No, they're, they're right here with me. They're right here with me. I'm actually talking on the phone with uh, with my mother-in-law. That's who answered me. Okay, okay, great. Well, I'm going to ask you a couple additional questions about the property. Uh, uh, is the property currently vacant, occupied, or, or are you guys living in the property, or what's the situation? No, it's, it's actually just sitting. Okay, so the property is just sitting. Okay, if you guys... Have you guys thought about maybe fixing the property up or maybe just renting the property back out? Have that ever crossed you guys' mind? No, they, they actually did a lot to the house already. Okay, okay. Yeah. What's, what's some of the repairs that you guys made to the property? We did the whole plumbing system, the roof, uh, the kitchen, the whole wiring, windows, uh, blowing. What else was the, the, the whole remodelation of the bathroom? Okay. The rooms, the floor, everything. It, it, yeah, it's, it's just the deck, but that, so, that's something that we we're really so let me, to work on. So let me ask you this, man. If you guys did all that to the property, what left for me to do? What would you say I have to do to the property at this moment? Uh, I just probably paint it, probably, at the most. That, uh, those heaters and everything. Okay. So you guys said that I might paint the property. Guys, change. Yeah, but if, like I said, if they don't get sold for the price that we that they want to sell it, I mean, we call it always do it, whatever we gotta do to it and sell it for a higher price than that. But. Uh, let me ask you this, man. And I know we're just having a conversation. I'm just curious here. Uh, I mean, uh -huh. what, what what would you say is uh, one of the reasons? And I know I reached out to you, of course. But what would you say is one of the reasons that you're looking to sell this property today? Uh, how can I serve oh, you guys? They they, they, sold, they they want to sell it because they have a, a, another bigger house. So that's, that's the okay, okay. And how quick are you guys looking to sell it? Because, uh, and the reason I say that, uh, we just sold one of our properties, so we do have some extra funds to be able to liquidate right now. And uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, man, it's a lot of stuff going on in the world. I'm sure we both can agree on that. And uh, I would say, yeah. man, before the next 30 days, the property value start going down by 10 to 20 percent. You know, I would advise you guys, even if it wasn't just for me. I would say that you guys would need to sell the property. No, they're, 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 not really, they're not really worried about that because, like I said, the house is sitting there. So if they sell it for the price they want to sell it, they'll, they'll sell it. I mean, they've been holding on to the house for two, going on three years. So if they don't get yeah. sold I'll, at the price they want to sell it, they could keep on holding on to it. And, and, and I totally understand that, man. I totally understand that they've been holding on to it for a while. But let me ask you this, man. If I were able to buy the property cash. I could take care of closing costs and everything like that and any other fees that's associated. I mean, how do you think it would make them feel if I was able to lift the property off their shoulders right now? I mean, no. If you, if you, give the, if you name the right price, it's always, it's always eligible to go through anybody's hands. But if you, don't, if you don't say the right price, like I said, it's not a, it's not a rush that we're trying to do. We can always remodel and more we need to. It's it's not it's what I'm trying to get to you is not a rush to sell it. We're just trying to get it off our hands. But if you say the right price, we could reach an agreement. I wanna I wanna I wanna reach the right price with you guys. I wanna I wanna see what the right price is because at the end of the day, 
I want you guys to be able to walk away with a smile on you guys' face. And uh, I just want us to be able to not lose money on the deal. That's all I'm asking for. You know, as long as you guys are happy and we can strike up the right deal. Yeah, but, I mean, if you want to come and see it or if you want to send one of your guys or one of your people, come see it as long as we get the six feet distance, like I said. Um, yeah. <laughs> always come to see it and you can give me your price. And I'm going to be honest with you, man. There, the, the, the safest thing right now, uh, what we've been able to do, uh, you know, with you guys being the homeowners and everything like that, if you guys can even get pictures of the property and you can send it over to us, it really will help us expedite the process so that way that we can stay more than six feet away, but at the same time, we can definitely add value to one another. So that's definitely something I'm looking to do right now. But let me ask you this, man. I'm still here. I'm actually uh, just wanted to ask you this, and this is the really reason I want to give you a call. I already spoke to Taisha about it. She told me a little bit about the situation. And I want you to correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, she told me that uh, if we were to purchase the property cash, take care of the closing costs. I mean, we can even give you guys a cash advance if that's needed to you guys to let you know we're serious. She had mentioned something about $35,000. Uh, is that what you guys are looking for to get the property off? Would that make you guys happy? Uh, no, it's actually for forty five. my mother-in-law told me. So for $45,000. It's, uh, me... it's forty five or best offer. It's 45 or best offer. Let me ask yeah. you this. Uh, and I'm just curious about this. I know we're just having a great conversation, man. You've been totally honest with me thus far. Uh, how do you feel about that uh, That 40000 that we were able to come up with the funds? If I can get into the finance department and I can get that 40000 approved, I mean, where would you say that leave us at, man? What, the 40000 Yes, sir. Where would that leave us at if I was to absolutely be able to get that price for you guys? If you really give me 40000 I'll have to my mother-in-law see what she said because like i said i'm just a translator in this whole situation yes sir yes sir how did you how did you guys come up with that price if you don't mind me asking i know you it's two different prices you got one price that uh is for properties that's retail that's been fully renovated the 2020 standards and then you got other prices you know it's just as is uh property prices where people are buying the properties for an as is condition i know you said that you still got a little bit of work left on the property but which category yeah, but like I said, if you put, if we got put a grand into it, it's a lot. Because it's the only thing it needs is a deck and a paint. That's pretty much it. Well, for anybody that wants to get in and move out. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? It, 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 falls, in the, it falls in a decent category of 40000 because of that reason. Yeah. Because, like I yeah. said, if you got put a grand, oh, and you're talking let me let me ask you this and, and i totally respect that you guys put a lot of money into the property so i mean it's only right that you know you guys deserve to get everything that you're looking to get out of the property but the only problem i have is i am a real estate investor we don't buy properties at retail for cash but let me ask you this would you consider yourself as an open-minded type of individual what if i was able to present another offer to you guys that allow you guys to receive uh, passive income over time. She's actually telling me uh, right now that she's open-minded to the price. And whatever your offer would be, she would take into consideration. But like I said, it's not. You know, let me let me ask you this, money. man. I'm actually looking at my system right now. I want you to help me out with some. Uh, I actually tried to pull your file up, but for some reason, uh, typically it does pull up, but it's not pulling up right now. Give me the address to the property. It's 835 North Graham, uh, North Carolina. No, no, it's no, 835 North Graham Street, North uh, uh, Avenue, North Carolina, 27. I got you. I think, I, I think I'm pulling it up right now. And while this is pulling up, while I'm pulling everything up in my system, how many bedrooms and bathrooms does the property have? I know I talked to Taisha about a lot of things, but she absolutely didn't tell me about this. How many bedrooms and bathrooms does it have? It has, it has two bedrooms, one bathroom, and that's the living room, the kitchen, obviously, and then the laundry, the laundry, the backyard. It has like a little deck going out to the backyard. Exactly. Um, okay. And there's a shed. Was, and another thing that they, they uh, put fence all over the property, so... That's something that wasn't there. It's just an extra to the house, like I said. Exactly, exactly. 
So let me ask you this, man. And I, and like I said, man, I'm a total honest guy. Uh, my call is not just to get the lowest price as possible. The reason why I'm giving you a call because I want to see, you know, in what way can I add value to you guys? Let me ask you this. I know you said that if the property didn't sell, she really wouldn't, it really wouldn't bother her too much or bother him as well too much. What if I was able, what if I was able to structure something with you guys where you guys can absolutely still receive the $40,000? What if I was able to pay you guys every single month, you know, own that $40,000 and I'll take over, you know, as far as the maintenance of the property, I'll be responsible for renting the property out, but you guys can get a passive payment every single month and we can come up with the terms with each other. That, that, that's a definitely no because, like, it, like I said, if, if they're going to get rid of it, they want to get rid of it as a whole. They don't want to have to, you know, get payments on it. They just want to get, if they're going to get rid of it it's, as a whole, that's the cash in hand or cash check or whatever it is. As long as that's fun and you, you're really trying to get your hands on this house. I want to get, oh, man, listen, I want to get my hands on it. You know, right now, I'm in a certain situation myself. I'm not sure of you. Are you familiar with the 1031 exchange? Are you familiar with that? Yeah. Exactly, man. So, I, I don't know, I, so basically what that is, is when you take, when you, when you, when you, when you basically, when you sell off an asset and uh, you have to buy another, a bigger asset, so that way that you don't have a lot of tax penalties, right? Not necessarily penalties, yeah, but you kind of save yeah. on taxes. So right now I'm in a situation, I only have 30 days left to be able to purchase another property so that way I can liquidate these finances. And uh, I just thought that if I gave you a call today, it would just put us in an awesome situation. Not only that we get the opportunity to buy another property, but the most important thing, you know, we could take the property off you guys' hand and uh, it'd be less stress on everybody, man. I just want to see how we can move forward with everything. So I'm actually, uh, I'm looking at a couple of properties right here. Uh, I'm looking at all the two bed, one bed uh, bathroom properties uh, in the Furrow Heights. That is the uh, subdivision the property is in, Furrow Heights, correct? So let me ask you this. I see one property that sold uh, for 15000 and I see another property that sold for thirty two five, And the one for thirty two five, oh, yeah. that one was actually... The one right in front of it, I think it's the one that... Uh, exactly. Have you seen the inside of that property yet? Yeah, but... Yeah, I, I saw it, but they did a whole bunch of remodelation to that house. So let me ask yeah, you. That house was that. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but that house was a whole bunch of lot shit, and they sold it for that price, and somebody came in every month for a cheaper price, and, because I knew the guy from, from front, I knew him for a couple of years. He sold it for a cheap price. To a real estate, and, and I wish they, my uh, they prop stream would work correctly. And they tried fixing it a little bit, painting it a little bit. Like I said, it's not the house is not. It, they they didn't do a lot of work, and they took so, out a lot more money. Okay. So that's what we're some off of that price is what we're based off because the house, the, our house, it's that's in front of it. Yes, sir. I mean, you get you get nice shade, you get nice sun in the morning. So. I mean, it's, it's way better than that house because that house has a lot so, a lot of trees around it. And yes, sir. Are falling on it and whatnot. Roof was bond for the roof. So let me ask you this. And, and, and let me ask you this, man. You seem like a pretty smart guy. Uh, you've been totally transparent with me. Let me ask you about this. Uh, I, now you said that this house it was similar property. It sold for thirty two five. They put a lot of work into the property, and I know that you guys yeah, were. So, so let me let me ask you this, man. Uh, you know, you guys are asking forty thousand. Continue on doing the renovation to the property and then put it back on the market for resale. But it just looks like that the highest point property in the area is sold for forty thousand. I mean, if if 
with, with me purchasing. If you want to sell it, if you want to sell it for that price, I mean that would be on your, on your thing. But like I said, it's it's just you know the house. It's too nice to let go for anything less. Yeah, I, like I said, uh, they're they're not really in a rush to sell it. But if you get the right price, and uh, what else can I tell you? The house, I mean the house, the, the properties around it right now, they're they're selling at that price because I mean, like you said, the whole thing I'm, going on. Yeah, I, and like I said, man, you know, you know, I'm not. I'm not in the business of hitting the lottery. That's not what I'm in business of doing. I know. You know, and, and the reason I say this that <laughs> if I pay forty thousand for the property and I look like that's retail value, I'm gonna bring you kind of into my world a little bit, you know, and I appreciate the introduction to you guys' world, the work that you guys done to the property, but I'm gonna bring you into my world for a minute. I gotta pay cash for the property, I gotta pay closing costs when I purchase it. Yeah. I still got to do some renovations to it. I got to have insurance on my contractors. I got to have insurance on the property and I got to pay utilities until we sell it. And then once we sell it, I got realtor fees and commissions. And I also got to pay closing yeah. costs again. And then I'm trying to make a small profit. The problem is at 40,000, which is the tip top of the market over there. And I'm purchasing for 40,000. Would you say I'm going to take a loss or would you say that I absolutely a win on this property? I'm just trying to get I mean, your opinion on this. On the, on, the, on the retail side, I'm not going to lie to you. It's a loss. I'm not, not going to lie to you. On the retail side, it's a loss. It's just because of the simple fact that you guys use, you know, contractors and insurance policies. And, I yes. Mean, I, I know a little bit of, 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 the, of the real estate real side because I've been, I've been working a lot of time in. Um, yes, sir. Yeah. And, 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 and I and I was when you work in construction, you know, on the real estate side, I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and you know try to be at you. Excuse my language, but uh, it's just it's for you guys for a real estate. I mean, it's, it's man, it's I'm, a loss for you guys. And, and, and you know what? I appreciate that honesty. And like I said, yeah. man, you've been honest from the get go. You know, you seem like you're a very nice guy. You actually, you said you do some uh, construction work. You know, I wouldn't even mind getting your number to call you again over some projects that we, you know, in the future are going to, you know, going to have going on. But, and that's why I wanted to ask you, like, you know, with us taking a loss at 40000 I mean, is it any way that we pay cash, take care of closing costs, we buy it in as this condition, they don't have to worry about the property sitting anymore or paying any taxes on it, you know, while it's just sitting. I mean, are you guys willing to work with us a little bit? I just want to be able to get this property off you guys' hands. I'm I mean, like I told you, if you hit the right price, depending on what your price is, I could always tell them. And, you know, they could, if they're interested, they'll give you a call back. And if not, then. Um, um, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't make, I can't force them to make a decision. How many, only how many people? What your price is. Let me ask you this. How many people have looked at this property so far? You know, we just having a conversation. Uh, I do. Uh, that's. Since they, since they have it or since? Since you guys have been trying to sell the property, how, how many people would you say that's probably looked at the property so far? I mean, it's been a couple, not a lot, really not. Like I said, yeah. it's mostly realtors, and uh, a lot of them tried lowballing. Yeah. And uh, but I, I well, understand why. You know, I'm not, I'm yeah. not going to sit here and tell you what there yeah. is a lowballing. It's yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. It is, but it's, it's, they're lowballing. I mean, they're they're giving their prices because of you know they they need to get their profits too, like you said. And at the end of the day, you guys pay so much money to all these other insurance companies, and yeah, yeah, your contractors and your electricians and your yes, sir, all these other yeah. people, which is out of your guys' companies. And I mean, yeah, the company to make money, you know, the company don't need to be loose and loose and loose. Exactly, because it's not. You guys don't get paid. There's not enough realtors, and then what's gonna happen? There's not gonna be selling the houses. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I, I know this area like the back of my hand, uh, and like I said, man, I got a partner. He's actually one of the finance managers as well. He actually bought a property yeah. on Gray Avenue. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Gray Avenue. I, I, I know what you're. Man, I'm I, right down the, on the other side of the street. Man, I've been buying properties in this area for the last five years. You know, I'm 100% familiar with the area. I say this, man, and like I said, you guys going to have to make a decision. I just wanted to reach out to you guys because I understand what the market is doing. Mark my words, in the next 30 days, property values going to start going down, and I just don't want you guys to get stuck with the property. 
if I can purchase the property and I can get these funds approved in the finance department, if I can pay cash, take care of the closing costs and everything like that, and you guys don't have to worry about the property losing value, I know for a fact right now that I can get $20,000 approved and you guys never have to worry about the property again. Okay, well, well let me let me let let me tell them because they're they're back in the backyard. She, my my mother in law just left because they were shoot stir. Like I said, we're doing a little something over here at the get uh, get together at the house with our family. Totally, totally understand that. But let me ask you this question. And like I said, man, you you came out as a guy that knows exactly what he wants. I mean, and, and like I said, I'm just curious about this, honestly. How you feel about that twenty thousand dollars plus us paying closing costs? And you guys don't have to put any more work. How do you feel about that? I mean, my mother in law, I'm not gonna lie to you, my mother in law makes the shots and honestly so, she don't so, want that. So so I mean I, I it sounds like that, you know, we need to pull them out of the backyard. We need to get everybody in the same room. Because honestly, I typically don't even make, you know, uh big decisions without everybody being present because you know, and it's just and it and it's just the way I grew up. Like I said, but she just left us. Like I said, her, all her daughters are back there. Her husband's back there. I'm, and I'm the one that gets stuck in the middle of all this. And I don't know how You know why you're stuck in the middle of this? Because they trust your opinion. And that's the reason why I want to ask oh, yeah. you how you feel about that 20000 uh, And like, I'm, I'm, like, like I told you, I'm not... I'm, I mean, I would be the type of person to go get them and tell them, hey, they want to give you 20 Right. But with, that, with me knowing her nature and her mentality is, and her price range, I mean, she told me the lowest and she's that's it. So, 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 so let's just do it like this, man. I'm a guy that's very realistic. When is the best time to give you a call back? That way we can get everybody together and we can see how we can move forward with this. When is the absolute soonest that we can make that happen? Could we make it happen this afternoon sometime? I actually got some free time around I mean, like 6 o'clock. I mean, if you come up with a better deal than 20, I mean, yeah, you could, but if you're going to stay with your 20, I mean, I, I'm telling you right now, it's, it's a no. I got you on that, and, and, I'm, and I'm glad I mean, you said it's that. Gonna be a waste of, it's going to be a waste of your time and my time and their time. Exactly, and, 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 I, and, I, and I absolutely. Like said, I'm, I'm going to tell you straight out the gate. I'm not going to just give you the runaround. So I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to say 20,000 later on. It's, it's a waste of your saliva, my saliva. Pretty game planning with Taisha. You know where we at. You know our price. Now, before I let you go, let me ask you this. Before I walk back in my finance department to get the funds approved, you know where we at with the property. I mean, what price uh, would absolutely, you know, be able to get it done? I know the 40000 is going to be too much. I know, you know, me and my guys, we wanted to be at twenty. But if I was able to go back to my guys in the finance department, we can get this deal done in the next seven to ten business days. Uh, we can cut renovation costs somewhere, even if I got to pull a couple extra dollars out of my pocket personally. I mean, what's the absolutely, you know, best that you guys can help me out with? So when I go back to these guys, I can go to them, I can be fully prepared, and I can say me and you already talked about it and we're ready to get the process started. I mean, what's the absolute best you guys can help me out with? I mean, it's, it's all about helping you, you know, because it's, it's their property and it's, if they want to sell it for the price that they want to sell it, I mean, I, so, can't, I can't give you that. I got you. That, that, and, and, and I like your honesty, man. And, <clears throat> and my question is this. I totally understand where they need to be at on the property. It's all up to their approval. But if you were in their shoes and you were the main decision maker, would you take the 20000 or how you feel about it? I, I, I mean, it's, like I told you, I understand where you're coming <clears throat> from because you guys even make money. But at the same time, like I told you, they're not in a rush to let it go. I got you. I got you. And that's totally understandable. But this is what I'll do, man. If you just give if you just give me a time to give you guys a call back, I'll go back to my partners in the finance department. I see what is the absolute best price I can get approved for you guys. And uh what's the best time to give you a call back so that way I can discuss it with my guys. You discuss the twenty thousand with them. Even if they're not willing to do the twenty thousand, at least you can go back and see what's the absolute best price. Uh what's a good time I can give you a call back on this? Uh, what time is it right now? It's four. Probably, probably tomorrow. Cause, I mean, Let's say this. I got I to gotta attend church service at 12 p.m. noon. Uh, everything is online right now. After I get done watching the, uh, the church streaming, 
and uh, get my worship on. Can I give you a call back at around maybe like 4 p.m. Uh, Central Time? Is that fine? Uh, Central. Yeah, we're in Central Time. Yeah, yeah 4, 4 p.m. tomorrow. Now, 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 before I let you go, and uh, and I want you to enjoy your day. I want you to stay safe. Uh, now, I know that I mentioned the $20,000. Uh, I know that you said that they probably won't feel that, but I know that we are also looking at a couple of different other properties right now, but we're only looking to liquidate one because remember, we got to get the 1031 exchange done. So yeah, at least, I know what you mean. How much, I mean, do, do I need to put at least that 20000 on hold right now just in case they change their mind? Should I secure the funds to the side typically? We do have to have agreement I signed mean, up. I mean, should I at least secure the funds until I speak to you guys tomorrow at 4? If you want to secure the funds, that's totally up to you. But I mean, I'm telling you that <clears throat> right now, if you come back with twenty, I'm, I'm telling you that. It's so, like I told you, man. And, and, and let me ask you this: This is the last you, question. They're, they're more straight up, and they're not going to give you the run around. They're more straight up than I am, and I. I got I'm you. What? Well, you say? She's going to say no. Hang up the phone. So, so let me ask you this, man, and I'll let you go after this. I want you to enjoy the day. I know that you said that you didn't want me to put the twenty thousand dollars on hold and secure that. I know I can't do forty. I mean, what would you say is an amount, at least a price range, uh, that I, I should put on hold right now? Like I said, it's not nothing set in stone, but I mean, how much funds should I put on hold right now? I know, I know you guys not taking twenty. I know it's forty is retail. I mean, what is the absolute best you think I should put on hold? At least I don't miss out on the opportunity to help you guys out. I mean, how much should I secure right now? If you come back with some 37 or 38, I mean, I mean, you could talk. Okay. I, told, I, I totally understand that. This is what I'll do. I'll go into the finance department, consult with the finance managers and investment team, and I'll give you a call back tomorrow at 4 p.m., and I want you guys to enjoy your day. Stay six feet away from everybody, and uh, and I'll yeah, be back. I'll be, I'll be back in contact with you tomorrow, okay? All right. Sounds good. All right. You have a blessed day, sir. You too, man. Bye-bye. He just, it just, they just ain't that motivated, man. That's all that is, man. Hey, that was a monster call, monster, monster call. Believe <laughs> like that. Y'all just that's gonna have to send the replay out, man. Rewatch that call a couple of times, cause it was, it was too many gems in that call, man. And yeah. I want to, and I want to say this real quick, and I definitely appreciate it, Chris. I want y'all to pay attention to everybody that's watching, how I, I, I gave every option yep. that yep. I possibly could. And I know Aaron pay attention to stuff like that, and I know Q do as well, and Chris. If y'all see, listen, it's nothing else I can do. Work through every single rebuttal. Follow the work. That's yeah, it. You work, you work through every this. single rebuttal. I'll say this. If I heard my acquisition person do that, I'm I'm giving, I'm, they're getting dapped. They're getting a hug. No corona. You know what I mean? Because they did every single thing they could have done. At that point, it's like you, you've you already mastered everything. You've done everything that you, that's a successful call. You just got to yeah. follow up with it. Nobody you know said I mean? something key, Aaron. I disagree. I think if you spoke with the homeowners, they would come to terms. The messed up part, they don't even speak English. Yeah, they don't speak English. Yeah, but English. hey, look, that's why I got two Spanish speaking people on my team, man. Smart. That, that's smart. That that's that something reason. I need to add. That's smart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Smart. yeah. Too, to even add to that, man, is always know the difference between someone who just understands like Spanish and knows how to speak it and versus someone who understands how to speak it formally, because those are two different types of Spanish. Uh, that maybe not a lot of people understand, but uh, like my one of my good friend, friends, he's my sales lead, right? His name's Lionel, and his Spanish is just like as if he was in Mexico. And a lot of our sellers will appreciate it. Most sellers will. So uh, you know, it seemed like that person was speaking, uh, wasn't speaking for his parents, just trying to help his parents get the most amount of money. Maybe he had like a monetary uh, interest in that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But, but see, the, the reason why I'm, I'm so hype on that is because, guys, you got to understand, even with mastering the sales process, even with, with understanding the different terms that you can offer, not every, not every prospect, not every lead is a deal. You know what I mean? So you have to understand at some point in time that you're, you're going to have to, you have to let it go for a little bit. You're going to have to let the market slap them in the face. The market's going to tell them, look, you, you're not going to get this for, and now you can follow up and hopefully they're, they're a little bit softer and you can work with them a the little bit. The problem is the market's going to end up hitting them. They're going to come back even cheaper. All right. Listen, I know they're going to come back. Yeah, they're going to come back. They, gonna they, gonna, come back. They, they motivated. They just think they don't need the money. They motivated, yeah. but they don't need the money. So they think they can just get any amount that they want. So, you know, everybody's got to understand something very clear right here, right? 
We're, we're in a transitional space in the market right now. So for the last seven years, all right, really eight, for the last eight years, it's been a seller's market. Yep. So, so as a seller, right, we, we've been able to dictate the same way we've been able to do in our wholesale businesses, right? Hey, look, highest and best offer, right? So sellers have, been, have that same energy. They've been able to do the exact same thing for the last eight years. Right now, this, the market is in a transitional space and it's transitioning back into a buyer's market. So it's going to be a little bit of time before some sellers start to realize like, oh shit, like I can't get the same price that I used to be able to get because the market is shifted. All right. The, what that means though, is it leads to deeper discounts on that call. Keith went through literally every single rebuttal that the guy had. Um, I don't necessarily agree that he should have talked to the homeowner because um, the, the person that Keith was speaking to was speaking with too much confidence. So yeah. uh, that lets me know that they may be the decision maker. And if they're yep. not the decision maker, they definitely have a say in the decision. Yep. So not, nothing's being done. And here's an easy way to pick up on that. All right. Because he told Keith that he, he, I've been in construction work. He has some knowledge about real estate, closing costs. He sounded like he worked for some investors before. So people in his family, if he's the only English speaking person in his family, they're going to be leaning on him yeah. right, to understand and get help to make decisions. You guys got to know that that's how things work. Because if I were to talk to them, I would have still had to talk to him. Exactly. You would have to go back to him again. Yeah. Right. He was just he he himself was using a a, a tactic and referring to uh, uh, deferring to a higher authority. That's all exactly. he was doing, so yeah. that he could so he could preserve his relationship with Keith and say, "Hey, look, I'm not the it one." It ain't on me. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's all he was doing, yeah. right? And we and we do that all the time with our buyers, don't we? Do that with our buyers. Exactly. He's and doing try, the same thing. I try to box him in and create urgency to in, in asking him. You know, I, you know, should I put these funds to the side? The twenty thousand. I knew he like was going to say right no. Here. I knew he was going to say no. I told him I can't put forty to the side. I know you don't want me to put 30, uh, twenty to the side. What number do I need to put to the side so I don't miss out on the opportunity to help you guys out? Now he got to. He had to tell me thirty-seven, thirty-eight. At least I know how he's feeling. At least I know exactly how far he's willing to go. It is a follow-up. Yeah, man. Um, are y'all ready for me to jump in this call? Let's get it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, Bron Bron. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna jump into one of these uh one of these Richmond calls real quick that somebody sent in. Hey Q, if if we have time to go another round, if you wanna if you wanna hit up Mahogany's uh uh one one joint, the one that you skip trace. Yeah, yeah maybe after this one. I gotta I gotta do that. I also gotta follow up with uh I actually gotta tell Taisha a few things about these properties that she sent me because I just got done confirming the numbers. And then uh, I have to call that Houston lead back, back and bag it for Shelby. All right, I'm about to rock. Hey, Jerry, this is uh, Chris with RP Holdings. Let's give you a shout. You've been speaking with, uh, yeah. with Cole in my office about the property over there on Venable. Okay. So I just want to give, okay. yeah, I just want to give you a shout about it. Uh, I know you guys have been speaking and, you know, working on coming up with an offer amount. So I'm, I'm over here in the finance department. I've kind of been looking at it the last couple of days to figure out what we could do. So I want to get on the line with you. You got a quick minute where we could chat? I do. All right, perfect, man, perfect. So, uh, so from what I understand, you know, it looks like it needs some work, uh, and it's a, an attached property. From what I'm seeing, I drove by there a little bit earlier today. Uh, my office is out here in Short Pump, but uh, I was up. I got some properties up in Churchill, so I was running around there a little bit earlier, kind of taking a quick look at things. Um, sounds like right. uh, you've been looking to sell it for a little bit. Uh, I mean, ultimately, what's the uh, kind of what's the situation, if you don't mind? Well, I. Um... I have, I have that one, 1709, no, 21st Street. So I got two of them down there and I had two others. I fixed one of them up last year. It was 2315 Fairmont Avenue. It kind of went full tilt on it to get top dollar on it. Yeah. Um, 
I'm, I was going to do the same thing with Venable, but you know, I don't mind listening to offers with people who understand what's going on down there. And I guess different people have different mentalities of what they want to do. Some of them take advantage of the tax credits and things like that. So yeah, I've done some, uh, I've done some tax credit it, work. I think. Sure. Yeah. And no, I've done yeah, some tax so credit work over the years. It just kind of depends on the property. Yeah. 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 Um, so I know that um, I was thinking about doing it um, last year, but this guy that's renting from me, he stayed in there for a year longer. So uh, I was planning on doing one a year going forward, but he kind of uh, changed that plan. So basically you guys called and I didn't mind listening to whatever you guys had to say or offer. And um, I'm not sure what my bottom line would be on it. Um, I know it's got some value to it. Sure. I know it's not worth um, what Zillow says it is, but I do know that it's got a lot of potential going forward. So, um, the guy moves out end of April. So, is this a guy paying the eight seventy five decision? On, uh, yes. Got it. <clears throat> it's basically I, I don't mind telling you. It's um, is it like thirteen hundred fifty square feet? Thirteen eighty. Uh, this one, like you know, I can't eleven hundred. Eleven hundred. Okay. Okay. Um, it's my North 21st street that has 1300. So I'm sorry. That's um, right. it has two bedrooms upstairs, no bathroom downstairs. When you walk in, I don't know if you're familiar with the layout of a lot of these, you walk in, it's got like a long hallway goes to the back of the house yep. on the right hand side. It's got like a, a so-called bedroom, but probably more or less, I guess back in the day it was a bedroom, but you walk all the way back, uh, to the back part of the house and it opens up into like a den. Mm -hmm. with a bathroom, a full bathroom off of that. And then going back to the right corner, if you will, it has um, the kitchen and then um, like a, a laundry area off of that behind the bathroom in the den. So it only has one bathroom. What I had planned on doing was taking one of the bedrooms upstairs and putting like a six by 12 bathroom in it, six by 10 bathroom in it. Right. Because the bedroom would allow for that. It's that big of a bedroom. Uh, we figured out with, you know, I got a contractor I've dealt with on several projects. I just, you know, he's real busy right now. So I hadn't even really contacted about going, doing this particular project. Um, anyway, putting the bathroom upstairs, full bath, so that way it'd be two full baths. Well, I take it back. Um, well, Jerry, let me ask you a quick question while, you, while you're thinking on that too. Yeah. What, what, how much? Sure. You know, I know you said you got a contract you work with quite a bit. I mean, what do you think it costs to, to, to do all that work that the property needs right now? Well, we figured with adding a deck on the back as well, like mm -hmm. the next door neighbor. I don't know if you've seen the next door neighbor's house. Did you ride around back? Uh, no, I didn't, I didn't, neighbor, I didn't uh, go around back, no. Well, the guy is renting that house. He, he's a contractor, and he ended up using the tax credits and all that. Uh, he put a full deck on the back of it. it really looks nice. Uh -huh. uh, I think he even blew out the back of the house too and put an extra uh, or a room. I don't know if he put another bathroom down there. Gotcha. But anyway, um, uh, we figured about 60, 60 grand. Gotcha. Sounds about right. I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of actually working on one uh, right around the corner, 800 block of Jessamine, uh, right around the corner from you. Okay. Uh, I've got one that I'm renovating yep. over there right now. And that's actually a, uh, a tax credit project in the car district that I'm doing uh, that we're going to probably end up, we originally were going to flip it or rent it rather, but ended up spending a little bit more than we wanted to. So now we're flipping it. Uh, but uh, it'll still end up being a decent right. deal for me. Um, I mean, what was your plan after you yeah. fixed this one up? Were you going to flip it, rent it? Um, uh, sell it, flip it. Flip it. Gotcha. I gotcha. mean, the market's good right now. Well, the market is fairly decent right now. It's all better than it was, you know, five, six, seven years ago with BCU kind of blowing out even further. Um, yeah, I mean, we're I taking it. Getting the Creighton Court, they go tear it down. Right, yeah, they're taking down Creighton Court. Which one is Say it again. Uh, that's what I was going to say. I, I couldn't remember if it was Creighton or there's like three. No, no, Gilpin, Gilpin, Gilpin. Down there. Gilpin Court. Yeah, it is Gilpin. It is Gilpin. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. And that will really change things a lot, too, I think. Yeah, I think I that'll be big. Down there, so yeah, you know? once they do that, I mean, that'll be big, especially for Fairmount Street. Um, you know, that's going to be a critical yep. move, you know, once uh, RHA gets that done. Uh, you know, we're kind of in influx right now, you know, as a company, we're kind of taking it day by day, um, kind of evaluating how the market is shifting. You know, some of our lenders have kind of started to, 
uh, pull back. Some are continuing to move forward with us. Uh, you know, we buy some properties cash as well. Uh, so we're still actively buying. Um, you know, we're making offers based on the day, how we feel uh, that the market currently looks. Uh, right now, we're pretty optimistic that things will kind of get back to normal here uh, by June. So I'm willing to buy something and sit on it for a little bit, uh, even with things being a little bit slow with City Hall and planning department and things of that nature. Um, you know, I've got a credit line that we opened right. up. Uh, that I, I got to, I want to put some right. spend on before things get crazy before they take it away. Um, so maybe we can make something work here. Uh, what do you think I could flip it for once I fixed it up? If I put the 60 in it, you know, what do you think I could, uh, I could flip it for? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, say it again. What'd you think? Hello. I'm outside with my Bluetooth music box. Oh, I got and you. And so I keep switching over to my Bluetooth. So I lost you. I walked too far away from you and lost you. So <laughs> I, couldn't, well, I couldn't hear you. No, all good, um, man. I didn't hear the last thing that you said. Yeah, I was just curious, man. If, if I flipped it up, to uh, fix it up and flip it, you know, what do you think I could uh, could get on the market for it? Um, the one I got on Fairmount was like 976 square feet. You can look it up, 2315. Uh -huh. And I got 202 for it. Actually, I had it uh, I had it on the market for 210. The guy paid 205, and it was appraised for 202. So I went ahead and went with that. Um, I can't see. I don't know what market value is. Now, I, as I look on Zillow and Trulia and um, Realtor.com, I can see them. Anywhere from two twenty five to two sixty five, depends on what you put in them. Yeah, so I, I'll tell you, man. I'll shoot it straight with you. I mean, I kind of saw it as two fifteen. You know, it was about what I could likely okay. get for it. You know, once I fixed it up. Okay. Um, and, and like I said, man, I've definitely got some interest in that, and I uh, want to do something in the uh, in the neighborhood for sure. Uh, let me ask you a quick question. I mean, if if you were to take an offer on it today, what would be something that's workable for you that you feel comfortable with walking away and? Uh, you know, it sounds like you know your thing, man. You're an investor. You know, what gives you the, the, the right rate of return, given the repairs that I've got to come in and put uh, $60,000 into it, and, you know, given the ARV, um, I mean, what do, you, what do you think is, is, is kind of reasonable there that we could try to make work? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I don't know. I need to think about it. Um, <laughs> I'd like to think uh, 150, but you know, you being an investor, I think you know a little bit what needs to go into it, what you need to do with it, and what what you got to do to carry all that. Um, yeah, I definitely couldn't make 150 work. I mean, I wouldn't be able to make any money on that. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you kind of what I got in mind, and, and let's talk about it and see if it's something that we could uh, we could get done. Uh, I sold a property over on 22nd Street in the 1200 block uh, a couple months ago. Um, it was one that I bought to fix up. Somebody made me an offer on it, kind of, kind of the opposite end of this situation. You know, I was the guy getting the phone call and ended right. up uh, just taking right. it, taking some right. quick cash and selling it to a guy. Uh, so I didn't make everything that I wanted, yeah. but uh, turned some money over, got a good ROI on it, and kind of got down the road, bought something else. Um, you know, so I'm kind of looking around, I'm looking at one uh, not too far away uh, that's in the, uh, the 900 block of 21st that sold back in November. Uh, now that one sold around 75. Uh, I'm looking at another one uh, over on R that sold uh, for 50. Um, you know, I'm thinking it's, it's worth closer than to the 75, obviously, than the 50. Uh, you're not in a terrible block right there on Venable, obviously, at all. Uh, but I'd probably be somewhere in that ballpark yeah. is what kind of would be workable for me. You know, obviously, you know, if I sell for 215 after putting 60 in it, I've got to be able to uh, to make some money on it, you know, uh, and want to be in a, in a right. solid position. No, I yeah, I want to be in a solid position to be yeah. able to uh, to do so. Um, you know, so if I was able to get workable in that $75,000 range, is that something you could wrap your head around and uh, would feel comfortable with that we can make work? No, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I know I've got more there than, than that. Um, I, I can hold on to it and do a whole lot more with it than – than that so um sure i just uh again i i, I want to take your phone call um it's interesting talking to some of you 
investors, you know, have some that um, on different properties have offered, you know, made really good offers. I just didn't pull the trigger. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, like I said, man, things are changing by the day. Uh, let me ask you this. I mean, I'm, I'm at 75. I'm at one. You're at 150. I mean, obviously, you know, I got to be able to buy it, make money, you know. So, I mean, what what's a number that you could wrap your head around that I can kind of take a look at and see if it's something I could come up to and make work and it's something that we can get done? I mean, I think it'd be advantageous to you to uh, to sell if it makes sense, um, you know, especially given kind of the current climate. Uh, I'm willing to park a little bit of money up there and kind of sit still for a little bit. Uh, so I kind of wanted to to get your opinion. I mean, what do you think is a number that would be workable for you uh, that we could try to get done? I don't know. I need to think about it. I really don't want to give away money. I mean, you, you, you know, as well as I do, you can make uh, good money on that place. So, um, yeah, I'm not disagreeing I'm with you there. I'm not in that position. I need to, um, so I don't mind holding on to it. Um, gotcha. Is this something you bought? Uh, plan on doing. Yeah, how are you fun? If you don't mind me asking, man, I mean, how are you? Uh, we do some lending as well. I mean, how are you funding your projects right now? Are you uh, doing hard money or private money or just doing cash? Uh, hard money. Gotcha. Uh, I'm with the bank, so. Okay, you're bank. using a bank. I a lot of credit a while back. And, Got it. And uh, it, it's worked out pretty good for me. Um, I did several properties at the same bank, kind of went in there with a, a plan, if you will. And uh, worked out pretty good for me so far. So, got it. Okay. All right. So, look, let, let's do this, they man. Kind of bought into it, so it's good. Yeah, and no, I'm with you on that, man. I, I agree, man. I just closed a, a, a refi with uh, Union Bank uh, last week, man. So I'm with you. So let's do this, man. Let me let me take a look yeah. at it. I'll give you some time to think about it, wrap your head around it. When, when do you want me to give you a call back and see if we got a deal here that we can try to make? Um, I don't know. You give me a call in a week. It'll be fine. All right, sounds I'm, good, I'm man. I'm actually out of town this week, so um, kind of on vacation, so to speak, if you call it that. Um, so if, if I can get back town and, and get myself back to work and acclimate all that and then um, have time to think about it, I'll be thinking about it in the meantime. Um, see if I can't come up with a bottom line number. All right, um, sounds good. Do, do, do that for me if you could. And, uh, look, man, say travels, Jerry. We'll, we'll catch up next weekend sometime. And uh, see if this is something that uh, we can make work together. And if not, you know, maybe there's an opportunity for us to do something else together or help each other in a different way uh, yeah. down the line. Since we're, we're yeah. out here doing the same thing, man, we got to stick together in these times, you know. Yeah, yeah. Remind me of your name again, please. Yeah, yeah. Chris Jefferson. Chris Jefferson. Okay, Chris. Nice talking to you. All right, you too, brother. I'll give you a holler. All right, sounds good. Thanks. All right, man. Thanks. All right, bye. Bye. All right, guys. So, I mean, this is another example, man. You got to you got to vet your leads, man. So he, he doesn't have any motivation at all. The guys, I, I've had a clear conversation with him. Understand that he's not hurting financially in any type of way. All right, this is a property he owns in an LLC, and this is why I tell people not to chase down LLC buyers or LLC sellers. All right, because a lot of times they're just not going to be the most motivated people. All right, so the guy's got a credit line with his bank. Uh, he's getting ready to go on vacation. If he's, a, if he's a motivated seller and he's, he's trying to get this thing off, it'd be a priority for him to, to try to make that happen and get that done. Uh, so, you know, he's just not in a position where he's truly motivated. But like we talked about last time, guys, on the first call, that's why it's so important to utilize the script and fully work through the scripting and the framing of the script because you should be able to work through that first call with somebody and know whether or not they're actually motivated or not. So, like, this is somebody in my office – we would take him and drop him on a drip campaign and we would just touch him over the next 12 months. And if he's ever ready, he's ready. And if he's not, he's not, but he's not in any sort of priority place for us in our business at all. all right. So you guys want to keep that part in mind for sure. You guys want me to hit another one? That was a good call though, man. Just want to let you, that was definitely a good call. And, uh, and I'm actually, I was just sitting here thinking while you was talking, that it's good that, you know, I mean, of course, we all lock up deals on this, right? But it's I think that it adds more value when the call don't go the way that we want them to go. It's because you guys get a chance to see exactly how you post to exalt all your options. That's more important than getting the deal. Like, you knowing what to do when the call or a seller not motivated 
or you know, you we can give you guys game on how to uh, filter out a lead, just like Aaron and Q was talking about on the live. That's very, very important. You know what I mean? Because, because, honestly, I'm sure that we all the same way. Everything get filtered out pretty good. But I totally respect you guys for just hitting the ground running because you guys Absolutely. don't have at that place yet. So I definitely totally respect you guys. But it's a learning process for everybody, man. I just want to just, you know, let y'all know we appreciate you guys for being back on here for sure. Yeah, to piggyback that, man. So you, you guys are doing something great that most people aren't doing. One, you're talking to sellers. All right, so like that's, that in itself, you should be applauded for and, and saluted for that because there's so many people that are either trying to get in this business or they've been talking about getting this business for years and they're, do, they're not doing one simple thing which is just getting on the phone and talking to sellers. So you guys are doing that. Now that you guys are doing that, you're doing the right things by paying to be on these webinars, paying to have conversations with us, because now what you start to realize is, okay, so it's not just making the phone call. All right, it's understanding how to properly frame the conversation, how to properly control the conversation, right? How to ask questions to get the information that I truly need to get back from the seller so I can make a intelligent decision on whether or not this is actually a lead or not. And so then what happens is once you understand how to evaluate properly what is a lead and what isn't, now when you go to scale, now you're able to teach that to your team properly, right? So all you're doing is actually pulling in leads that are truly, truly motivated. And people who aren't motivated doesn't mean this guy won't ever be a seller, all right? That's not what I'm saying. But we would put him on an automated drip campaign for the next 12 months. And then when he responds and he's ready and he's now motivated, Maybe the market takes a shift. Maybe something happens with his bank, right? And now he becomes motivated. But we're, we're touching him on a weekly basis, right? Or, or bi-weekly basis. So then he'll circle back to us at that time. But, we, but we, you don't want to spend a lot of time on leads like this uh, because really it's just taking time away for you to be on the phone with somebody who is truly motivated, who can put money in your pocket in the next 30, 60, 90 days, all right? How many, how, many, how many deals have y'all closed and funded from people who you talked to three, six, nine, 12 months ago who, who you just kept on a, um, on, on a drip campaign or you touched, uh, you, know, you touched base with them every now and then, and then boom, out of nowhere, they come back and say, hey, something happened, I'm ready to sell. Hey man, listen, let me tell you something. I, I had a training call with my team or part of my team earlier this morning, uh, you know, some people that we got are new that are doing phone calls. That's where all the money comes from. Right. Uh, so like that's the that's the part that people got to wrap their head around is the money c truly comes from the leaves that you touch over time. Right. So like the reality of us getting on the phone call right now and getting somebody under contract, that's going to be like a two out of ten. Right. Eight out of ten times. What it's going to be is you're going to stage a follow up. Right. And somebody that down the line, once they do become realistic and their motivational point changes and elevates to a higher level. They're now going to be ready to go, all right? And that's why, like I said to Keith on his call, like that family is going to circle back at some point, right? Mm -hmm. The important part is to stay in contact with them and have conversations with them so that when they are finally triggered and motivated to sell, the phone call they make is to Keith. Yeah. So what I would do in this situation, you know, I'll follow back up with them, even if the price still didn't work, I would just keep him informed on what's going on in the news, even though if he already knew. And just tell them, like, hey, man, I just want to give you a call on this. I'm not sure if you guys found anybody yet, but I still just, you know, had you guys on my mind. I just want to check in with you guys to see how you guys were doing. You know what I mean? And uh, that's that's really a main thing, man. And, and it got to go back off what Chris was saying. In February, we got a $57,000 deal from uh, – uh, it was a drip follow-up from, like, nine months ago. And uh, one of our acquisition managers, Ashley, she actually been uh salesman of the month for three months straight. She's the follow-up queen in the company. She followed, it's only one girl that we got on the phones and she been selling another month for three months straight. So for the women out there, y'all can't do this. She the living proof. She brought 118,000 to the company in February alone. Mm. So, you know why though? She's not the most talented on the team. I love nobody that. Come out, on, come on. Talk nobody to him, bro. out follow up her. Nobody, nobody can out follow up her. That's and that's the reason why she gets so many deals. And, and real quick too, man. This is somebody that I would call back. This is a possible private lender, man. All right. He already owns property. He's already said that he's got an open credit line with his bank. All right. He's already said in the conversation that he's older. All right. He's, he's, he's interested in offloading the property because he doesn't want to have to keep dealing with it, worrying about the repairs, da-da-da-da-da. 
This is somebody that I just established credibility with him on the phone call by talking about the streets familiar to him. I told him I had a property a block away, right? So by doing those things, now I'm building credibility with him. So then at some point I could say to him, hey, man, I mean, I know you're getting older and, and working on retiring. You're traveling a lot. I know you just came back from vacation. I mean, have you ever thought about just, you know, funding projects and not even have to worry about doing all the operational parts yourself? Boom. Now maybe you got a private lender, right? So this is how you think outside the box and figure out things like this, become more effective and grow your business. I wanted to say one last thing to, to, to transition off of that, Chris, that because you were talking about, Chris, just, a, just a, a few minutes ago, that it has shifted almost overnight into a buyer's market. Yeah. That, that means, y'all, we cannot, we can no longer be that one girl in the club that has 10 dudes and she, right. you know, she, she's picking and choosing who she, who she talks to and gives her number to, right? Yeah. Now, now it's, it, it's, it's a hundred girls in the club and maybe only two or three dudes. So yeah, they flip. The, the whole game is flipped. So we, we, can, we can't, we can't, we cannot call the shots the way we were once doing as the wholesaler, right? So, so with that said, as the wholesaler, um, I know for us in, in San Antonio, you're not moving the deal unless you got it for 65 cents on the dollar minus yeah. repairs. So, so, you know, y'all might want to talk to y'all's hard money lenders who said and whoever the investors are setting the tone in y'all's markets, but, but we have overnight, I mean, literally, I mean, from one week to the next, we've had to, we've had to drop from, from a 75 cent model to a 65 cent model. And that's how we're negotiating. Because if, even if we did 70 cents on the dollar, that joint's not moving in our yeah. market. So keep that in mind, y'all, whenever y'all are negotiating. That's why that follow-up is so key because the seller doesn't realize that yet, but eventually they're going to realize that. And you want to be in the part of that follow-up process when they finally do, you're the person they sell that property to. Facts, facts, facts. This seller is giving me a call right now for Taisha. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna answer it real fast. All right, Let's yeah, do it. Yeah. It's your turn anyway. Yep. Cool. Hello, this is Quentin. Hey, Quentin. This is uh, Brian. Hey, Brian. How are you doing? Doing good. Doing good. All right. All right. So, uh, just give me give me a second. Let me get everything prepared. Got to stretch real fast. I'm kidding. Hold on. <laughs> all right, Brian. Uh, all right. How you doing? Good. Good. That's good, man. That's good. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm, I sound like I'm in an empty house. I just built the house, so. That's good. I'm in an empty house. That's a good thing to. That's a good thing. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, building houses. Yeah. I do new construction too, man, and uh, I'll tell you right now, it's a tedious process. In San Antonio, oh, yeah. I'm I'm actually in San Antonio right now. We just bought a project down here. You know, I work very closely with Taisha, but um, you know, we we do new builds here, but there's so many restrictions. You always have to be just like you know real careful on what you do oh yeah, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a general contractor okay that's what's up so, that's what's up so yeah so yeah i built uh, i built my own house oh yeah. <laughs> that's always the best thing to tell someone you know man uh, i'm pretty sure you'll get anybody's like you, you get the hottest girlfriend in the world telling them that <laughs> like i'll build oh, you yeah. a house you know what i mean <laughs> oh okay <laughs> bachelor over here man <laughs> That's good, man. That's good. So, uh, you know, I, I told, I spoke with Taisha, you know, we're looking at these properties. We got a couple on uh, Graham, North Graham, and then one on Claremont. Right. Right. So we're, we're just trying to figure out like more or less, you know, kind of get our heads wrapped around these properties so we can get an idea. So these houses right here, um, you know, you, what do you, what are you doing with them? If you don't mind me asking, like, what, what is the objective here with these houses? I just decided to sell, uh, liquidate a few properties. Uh, I started selling about, I had some more properties in Winston and I have some in Greensboro. I'm located in Greensboro. Mm. So I started liquidating in 2018. And so. What was the uh, reason? Uh, for the most part, I don't know. I guess uh, I was trying to get out of the business. I, uh, so I'm a, I'm a, I'm a civil engineer and I built a couple of houses on the side and then, um, I'm actually starting a business. Well, I have a general contracting business, but I'm going into business full time. Gotcha. So gotcha. At least I was before this coronavirus, so I don't know what I'm doing now, but oh. <laughs> probably in a couple months, I guess I'll just. Uh, so, what I was trying to do was I'm just been, uh, you know, just liquidating some of the things that I have so I'll have a little bit more cash flow, really, is what I was trying to do. No, I, I, I completely yeah, understand. I don't have to sell them. I just, they, they cash flow somewhat, but, you know, I just, 
figured I was going to sell them. And then this stuff happened here. I had lifted the uh, uh, four of them that I had with a realtor. Mm-hmm. And then the other ones, I said, well, I'll, I'll wait till those sell. And I was going to list these. And then I told the guy that cuts my grass, I said, hey, man, if you know somebody who want to buy properties, just let them know. And then, you know, uh, Ty, you should call me. So I, I didn't know. I didn't think he was going to have anybody to call me. <laughs> no, no, you good. You good. No, Taisha is yeah. awesome, man. Uh, I just barely met her like a few like a few months ago. So, you know, we've connected and uh, it's been great, you know, getting into the industry. Uh, her herself, you know, she's uh, she's awesome. She's definitely a go getter. So I'm super excited that she connected us. Um, yeah, that's, I sold it. You may have bought my property Tuesday. I, I sold the property on Tuesday to somebody in Texas. No. Oh. Uh, so I'm not gonna lie, man. Uh, North Carolina, Greensboro, that is on yeah. fire right now, bro. Like that, yeah. that that market's just crazy. But you know, obviously, there's a few things going on with the economy. I can't even. It's a weird time to have allergies. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's a very weird time. <laughs> I can't cough or sneeze in my own house without my wife thinking that I have the Rona. Yeah, you know? mine too. Yeah, my wife, she's Hispanic, so she calls it a La, Euro, La, La Llorona. <laughs> yeah, well, well, my wife sprays me with the license when I go home. <laughs> oh, my God. So she's just, like, take just, off your shoes, damn it. You got Rona on your feet. I said, what? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy, man. So, you know, that's kind of, I've been dealing with the same thing, so I know exactly what you're saying. All right, but, man. Um, you know, yeah, so, just, so, so you, you're asking me kind of like where I was with the... Yeah, yeah. So these properties are still available, right? They are. Okay, great, are. great. So yeah, man, like I totally get it. You know, we we I just got apparently. Uh, so I have an office here in San Antonio, Texas, home of the burritos and tacos. It's an amazing place for real, you know. But um, we've been buying properties a little over like the last eight years, pretty heavily in different markets. And you know, being in this area, Winston, you know, uh, it's just been a crazy transition for us because you know Texas properties are freaking huge and they're super cheap over here. You know they're they're really cheap. It's just like a, a different market. You know what I mean? And I think that uh, you know with these properties, there's definitely some potential here. You know, um, and I'm just well, kind of taking a look at them. Winston is kind of cheap too. It's mm-hmm. just I was a little surprised at some of the comps she sent me, but I understand because of the. Uh, you know, the economy over in 2008, a lot of the property values dropped. Mm-hmm. I paid too much for them when I bought them. When I bought them, I didn't. It was one of those, uh, see, back when I was buying properties, there was no money down. You know, we exchanged it. You know, you buy the property and you basically get cash back. Yep. It was a <laughs> it was a buyer's market back then, man. That, yeah. You know, I, I actually went through that. You know, I was in my early 20s when all that was happening. And, uh, yeah. You know, just seeing everything like transpire. My mom lost her house. My mom was a dancer, bro. So, you know, no, that kind of dancing, not like, you know, the regular kind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, I you know, know she, she yeah, got approved. Yeah, I tell you, man, she got approved for the craziest loan. We had a nice house. It was a four bedroom, two bath in the northeast side of uh, San Antonio. And then out of nowhere, man, that bank closed down and the new bank that bought her out you know, there was a reverse mortgage at that point. We ended up getting foreclosed on and my mom lost that house. But, you know, back then, anybody with a, with a $30,000, $20,000 a year income could get approved for a two hundred, four hundred thousand dollar $400,000 home. Right. And it's just, you know, it, I, I'm hoping that this, this whole recession thing isn't something that is going to do too much. I don't know if it's a recession. I just know that we ain't never seen something like this before. And uh, we just have to factor that in and take it into account moving forward because you just don't know. You know what I'm saying? No, you don't know. I get it. No, I get it totally. And that's fine. I mean, like I said, it's I'm not in a super hairy to sell them. I completely understand. I, I wouldn't like to liquidate. I didn't know this was going to happen. Like I said, I was enlisted by other ones, and I don't even know if the realtor's really showing them. A lot of people don't want uh, folks to come in the house. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, we, we're it's all good. I mean, we can do whatever. I mean, so as long yeah, as we're like six to, feet away, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I mean, and, and don't touch anything. You know what's yeah, crazy like, is I I do this virtually. We buy them without even taking a look at them. If we began this process right now, I wouldn't even, uh, you know, we would maybe see each other online for a minute so that we could see like who's doing business with who. But uh, this is something that uh, you know, I've been looking at for a minute now. I like these five properties. You know, look, I'll tell you right now. Um, 
Brian, right? It's Brian, not Bryce. It's Brian, yeah. <laughs> I got you, man. I'm sorry about that earlier. <laughs> Look, uh, if I were to give you a cash offer for this property and I could close in a couple of weeks, you know, let's say even the middle of all of this stuff that's going on, I see that they're currently cash flowing already, right? You have tenants inside of them? I do. Do they pay their rent? One of them I am going to evict the tenant whenever the coronavirus is over because she hasn't been paying. Which one? Section 8. Uh, 840 Graham. 840. Okay. 840 Graham, yeah. It's a, it's a Section 8 property, too. Um, the thing is, you know, all of those properties, the tenants pay their portion, and then some of the tenants, um, you know, uh, if they're not paying, obviously, Section 8 pays, but uh, they change the, the way everything goes with Section 8. They change the amount like every six months when mm -hmm. they pay. I understand. Depending on the tenant's income. That's kind of crazy. Uh, but I, are all of them controlled by Section 8? No, I have, let me see, four of them are Section 8. Four of them, okay. Four, four of them. more and four of them, they're long term tenants. I'm going to guess that they're all the ones in Graham. All the ones on Graham are Section 8. Yes, yeah, that is that's correct. Four. Okay, yeah. And they are, um, one tenant's been there 14 years. The one on Claremont's been in the house for 17 years. Um, and the other one, one of the other ones on Graham, 227 Graham, she's been there about 16 years. And so I got some kind of long-term tenants there. That is amazing. Um, uh, I mean, they probably could have bought in a house paying all that rent, but who wants oh, them yeah. to, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, and so... Um, you know, and so we, uh, like I said, that some of those properties just we just overpaid for them, and now you know it's kind of a, you know, depending on how I can how how we can structure a deal, I got to figure out if I can even afford to sell. <laughs> and no, no, that's completely fine. Look, and I, I like to be as transparent as possible. Okay, and yeah. uh, Taisha probably didn't want me to tell you this. I've been talking to her for a few months. Her and I, we plan on acquiring these properties together, and this would be her okay. first purchase, right? So with that on the table right there, just want to let you know, we're not trying to make a million dollars. That's not what we're trying to do here, right? But we definitely want to make sure that we're able to uh, set up the proper expectations. But, you know, we wouldn't be buying these to flip them. This would be like a total buy and hold. And I think that this is an amazing opportunity for both of us to be able to create cash flow. So we're going half on this together because she's my boots on the ground over there. And I'm all the way over here in San Antonio. So Look, if I were to give you a full-blown cash offer for all of these properties, and I'm just basing myself off the offer right now, if I were to give you $160,000 for these properties, would you be considering selling these houses to us? I got to look and see what the numbers are before. Potentially, I don't have that in front of me. Mm -hmm. I don't even know. Let me see. Well, I'll tell you right now, I, I kind of like, I, I went off of what the properties were valued at, and then I factored yeah. in what it would cost to make them pretty. So just throw lipstick, okay. you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah. you know. They're, they're, not, they're not bad on the inside at all. Of course. They're not, bad. They're not terrible on the outside, but of you course. Make them pretty, that's different. We also got to take care of the lawn guy, because without him, we wouldn't have never met you. <laughs> oh. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, we're not going to take care of them that crazy, you know, but definitely at, at times like this where people are getting laid off, I doubt that long guy even has any business right now. You know what I mean? So uh, yeah. it's just uh, it's just a really weird time. And, you know, I look with, in spite of the the virus and everything like that, we're willing to move forward with this. And, uh, you know, I can close this out in a couple of weeks. Uh, we already have some of the funding lined up on the back end and, you know, it's going to be half cash. I don't know if you've been investing for a minute, I'm pretty sure you're, you're pretty straightforward with this, but we have a hard money lender, right? And so like yeah. with our hard money, they were able to give us the bridge funds to be able to complete this. And uh, this would be my last purchase for the year until this burnt, this blows over, man. So, you know, uh, I would need to make a decision on this thing like stat. Well, we would, we would together if this would be something that you'd be wanting to do, because this is legit everything I have in my savings. And uh, I just want to make this an amazing thing for me and Taisha to, to take down together, if you'll have us, you know what I mean? Right, 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 right. Yeah, like I said, I just closed on a property on uh, Tuesday, and uh, another one that I sold. And let me, let me but you said 160, let me take a look at uh, uh, what I actually owe on the properties and make sure that I'm not like... Uh, having to bring money to the table. That's the problem. You I'm know, another thing pay. too, if you owe money yeah. on these properties, I mean, uh, there's this do unique, uh, if you do, if you do, mm -hmm. but if there is this, if there is money that's owed on these properties, I mean, are they already cash flowing for you? They can do cash flow for me. And one of them I do own, 
one of them is clear. One of the properties is free and clear. Okay. The other ones are, uh, I do have a mortgage on the other four. And I I'm got trying it. to think. These are the ones on Graham, right? Yes. What do you and make thinking, every month? Like just gross. Well, let's not even take talk about expenses or anything like that. Like on all four of those together, just a ballpark number. What are you making every month on those? On all four of those, all the grand properties. Yes, sir. If you don't mind sharing that with me. Uh, no, no. Let's see. Um, uh, I'd say I make probably three times. I probably make three times four. I mean at least a, probably twelve hundred dollars maybe well one of them obviously i have it free and clear i don't charge a lot of rent for it so i get about four or sixty four seventy four eighty about almost five hundred dollars not very much the other ones are like seven fifty something you so, know this seven. would actually save me some money and let me just kind of like let me let me throw this out there as an option you know like uh, I always try to be as creative as possible. This is something that I do heavily in Texas. I don't know what the laws are in North Carolina, so I'm gonna be very upfront with you. Uh, you know, just just from what you're making on these houses, that's phenomenal. That's twelve hundred dollars a month, basically, right? Uh, yeah. Would you be interested if I were to pay you out X amount of money? Well, let's not say this like a X amount of money. Let's put a dollar amount, right? Let's say you owed. 40,000 on each one, right? What if I were to give you 5,000 per property and you walked away from them and I continued to pay the, the mortgages for you? And that way uh, you'd be released from paying all that debt. I would handle that mortgage in your place. And then that last property I could buy a cash. Yeah. Um, that's and it, a consideration. I, and uh, I'll tell you, I know it sounds wild. It sounds like a crazy thing, but I do it. I've done it about, I own 13 houses this way. And, uh, you know, we market heavily, we help military families out. You know, one of the things that a military man never wants to do is lose rank. And so like right. uh, a lot of these guys, they'll buy a house and then they'll get called somewhere else, right? And so when they have to move somewhere else, then what happens? The, you know, they have to sell their property, sometimes take a loss, sometimes their VA loan or whatever like criteria was built under it, isn't anything yeah. to connect it. So I provide those people with a solution by taking over payments on their house. So I have an amazing attorney in North Carolina that can do this. And uh, it's definitely just something to think about, okay? But I just want to throw that yeah, out there. You. If you can't yeah, liquidate yeah, at all. I'm not sure I'm interested in that, but we'll, uh, um, what I could do, let's say we just sell all the ground properties uh, first. Okay. And um, just uh, well, make an offer on just the ground properties a little Claremont, we'll come back later and do that one. Okay, give me one second. Let me take a look. There's four of them, right? There's four of them. Okay. For those four properties all together, I'd probably be close to 120,000. Okay. And I, of so course, me... I'll cover everything else as well, you know, but I'm just, re I'm basically knocking out the retail value out. Um, right. I just know that they're cash flowing. So what I look at is the, the amount of money that could be made every month. And we're really trying to build our portfolio. I'm very familiar with Section 8. Your tenants will be taken care of and we'll honor the lease that's in place and I can help you out with whatever you need on the back end. Yeah, let me look at the numbers when I get back to my house. Huh? But I do know that um, even at that, um, I'm pretty much just not making anything on them. Well, I want you to make something. Let's definitely come back to the table and talk to the, talk about this. Like, I don't want you to just walk away from these properties like that. You know, if these are all Section 8 homes and you're trying to liquidate, if I can get creative, I, I that's exactly what I want to do. I want to get creative. Yeah. yeah, and I'm with you. I want to be transparent. I mean, I just, and I know that that's why I had already, the numbers that I had given her had come from the fact that I knew I was already kind of taking a loss on it because of the market. Uh, so when I when I bought some of those properties, man, I mean, I I literally paid uh, uh, one of those properties. I paid sixty nine thousand dollars for it. Oh my god! And, yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, with, I bought. In fact, I did. I mean, I mean, I, and and uh, yeah, all of them were in the sixties. And that sounds crazy, but I bought them in the early two thousands, and that was in that area. That was normal. That's why I couldn't believe what they're selling for now. But after 2008, all of the values plummeted. I mean, they were, with because of all the foreclosures in that area, they're selling them for pennies on a the dollar. 
I thought it, I thought it had gotten better. I didn't realize it was still that bad. That's, so when she sent me her comps, I was like, my God, man, my car costs more than these houses. <laughs> I'm like, interested I'm in what you drive, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, 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 it just tripped me out. I mean, I saw that. I was like, man, goodness gracious. But – Look, uh, and, you know, that, that's very upsetting news, honestly, man, because uh, I've made a couple of investments as well myself and where you just get upside down on them. And before you even know it, you're like, you know, what the hell? Right. Um, uh, the point is, is you're still making money every month from them. And I see value in the cash flow versus just look. I mean, we're not trying to buy these things, kick the tenants out and renovate it, flip it. I don't think this is a flippers market right now, man. Like, especially with the economy, with everything that's happening. I honestly believe that cash flow would be the best approach to handle this, even though they're giving tenants all these crazy rights right now, you know, like with apparently, man, we can't evict. I don't know what it's like over there, but in San Antonio, they closed down all of our courthouses. I can't even file for eviction, bro. I can file for it, but it won't be honored for three months. That's, that's the time frame I was given. That's, that's the same thing I've been, I was told too. And so, you know, as I was trying to, you know, and I, cause I was going to raise the rent. So to on some of these, cause I'm going to raise the rent. This is what I've been getting since those tenants have been there. Like the lady has been there for, for 16 years. She snipped with paid, I paid 750. I got that 16 years ago. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean she's, she's been there. She's a, section eight i just never raised a rent and there's never really a problem with section eight tenants paying either man you know i have five properties that i own here in san antonio section eight oh, and yeah. uh two of them have stopped paying me rent i filed for eviction they know they're going to lose their section eight too but i just don't see how they couldn't afford i mean the section eight covers the rest they pay like 220 a month but look uh yeah. with these properties man I, i'd love to purchase these houses i think that we could definitely get creative with these if I can get creative with them, then we can make this happen, man. I mean, we, we yeah, make, I make it happen. Trust me. I want it to be a win-win. I just, uh, I don't want it to be a win kind of lose. <laughs> no, no, man, definitely. Look, uh, that other option I was telling you about is, is, yeah. is genius. Uh, if you have time, look, uh, I think this is going to be a longer conversation. I have dinner waiting yeah. as well for my family. Okay. But uh, I'm going to go for it. And me and Taisha, we're going to hop on a three-way call with you so that we're all on the same page. And uh, I'm going to explain it to you. I'm going to see if I can get my attorney on the line so he can explain it to you. And if this is something that you're okay with, man, these properties, I think there's something we can make happen, uh, Brian. We can do a couple of them like that. You want to just talk? You want to reconnect on Monday? Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. Okay. Brian, look, uh, pleasure meeting you, man. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, you as well. Thank you. God bless you. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Thanks. I know I could have gone for the close, guys, but if I would have went forward and been a little bit more aggressive with that guy, you don't want to be aggressive. Well, that's, well, good, that's good report building, Q. That's a long yeah, term. that was nice report building. What I'm going to, like, look, uh, Taisha, what we can do is offer terms on these properties. And because he owes mortgages on them still, this is what we can do. We can probably buy those properties subject to. And uh, I'm pretty sure I can just post, I can put this out there. We'll find someone in North Carolina uh, I know Chris really close with Max. I'm really close with Max too. We have a couple of guys. Nasir is in, in North Carolina, right? Yeah. This property right here, I mean, these four properties, I can already see it. We're going to wrap these and owner finance them all day. And with this type of property, um, oh, Taisha's in Max's office. That's what's up. With this type of property, this is buy and hold city because he has tenants that are already paying. He's making $1,200 a month. If somebody told me all I had to spend was fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000 right now, and there's a possible chance that I could make $1,200 a month with tenants that are already paying rent, bro, that is a, not only that, but I would own four assets that I can borrow against. So, yo, this is a steal. This is a deal, like 100%. And uh, we're going to work out the Claremont one, but the, for the four on gram, it's almost a deal. Taisha, I'm going to need you to connect with me for me to help you close this. This is going to have to be done outside of all of this, 100%. But that was fire. <laughs> no, that was a great job building rapport, man. One hundred and ten percent. I don't. I don't. I could have gone closer into the close, guys. But I want y'all to understand this. Sometimes you have to ease back for a second. The moment that you're too aggressive, like you know, we were timing calls, right? Chris had this amazing deal in in California a couple of weeks ago, or last week when we did this, right? Uh, if we, if he would have had more time, and I wasn't timing him, he would have gotten it. Oh, easy money. Yeah. 
this guy says same thing I felt. There's no way. This is a follow-up lead. You want to put it in your pipeline. You want to talk to him too because he's doing business. He's saying he's liquidating. He's wanting to find more properties. Want to make something work. Yo, that's a killer deal, and, right? And now. listen, and he knows other sellers, guys. All right. He's an investor. He's in construction. He know he's gonna know other sellers, man. With something like this too, man, this is not like he would have. Like we were testing each other's knowledge during that conversation. We were trying to find out who knows what, who's been doing this. And just by grinding and thinking it out and talking with them about creativity, he was open to it. And he's trying to liquidate. He's like, dude, fuck the economy. My houses keep going down in value. I don't want them. So there's motivation there. Taisha, this is an amazing lead, but hit me up after this call so that we can work it together, okay? All righty, guys, this was only supposed to be a two hour call. I know we're like two and a half hours in. I'm going to pass the host to one of you guys. I got dinner with my wife I have to do. So, guys, I'm going to talk to y'all in a bit. Shelby, you and I got to close your Houston deal. Reach out to me after this. Taisha, reach out to me, okay, so that we can do this. Aaron, I'm going to make you a host real quick. You're muted, bro. Oh, my bad. Can you all hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. I was going to say, AQ, hey, make sure you keep us posted on, on how that deal works for, for Taisha. That, that way we can, uh, we can post it. I think the, um, those who, didn't, who weren't able to make it would love to see that and hear that. Yeah, absolutely. I was asking for 235 if you want to write, write this down. Uh -huh. His original asking price was 235 I got him to agree close to 160 Whoa. And then he I was just live right now um, to showing everybody what we're doing, and they couldn't hear that. So this is beautiful, bro. So, so say that again. My bad. He wanted 235 at front, and I got him to drop to 160, judging by the notes, right? And then from 160, he took out one property, and I offered 110. <clears throat> he says he's open to it as long as he can pay off his mortgages and walk away with a little something. So that was on a five-package deal. The Houston deal, the guy was wanting 600,000 originally, and we got him down to 500. I'm going to hit him at 450 on a, in an area that's being developed. The guy wanted how much? He was originally wanting six hundred thousand. I got him down to five hundred. I'm gonna hit him at four fifty. And that was for Houston. So we can post these results of this call. <laughs> Fucking crazy. I showed up this time, fellas. What's good? <laughs> <laughs> good right, job, bro. All right, guys. Job. We'll talk to you on a bit. All right, bro. All right, deuce, deuce, deuce. All right, so if Mahogany is on this, let's actually close out a deal. Like, let's, let's, actually, let's actually contract a joint. Mahogany, are you there? Okay, cool. So I'm going to call this joint right here, and, and let's see what we can make happen. So, so his name is uh, Mahogany. Can you, can you just um, copy and paste what you, what you, um, the notes that you sent earlier? So that so that while I call him, I can have that in mind, please. And let's and let's go ahead and and make this thing happen. Hey, Aaron. Before you do that, let's answer a couple of questions real quick. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, sure, Raymond, yes, sir. Raymundo had the the question about analysis paralysis. Yes, how to overcome it. Yeah, listen, man, uh, I'll, I'll take that one first. My, my, my answer might be a little bit harsher than anybody else's, but it, you got to, man, matter of fact, listen, read, read the shirt, man. Built, not born. Mm. Some of this shit, you got to be built with it. And if you're not built with it, or if you're not born with it, you got to build yourself up. Come on, You got to be intentionally, intentional on a daily basis about building yourself up. It's like anything else in life. If I know my shortcomings when it comes to something, if I know that and I recognize that, I don't, I don't need nobody to point anything out for me. Yeah. I, I got to take some ownership and accountability, and I got to get on top of that. Yeah. I need to be online. I need to be on YouTube, Googling time blocking, and, and understanding and learning how to time block. Come right? on, baby. Yep. I got to be intentional about these things. All right? So what happens is you lose a lot of time in life waiting for somebody else to tell you something that you already know. You lose a lot of money doing that too, all right? So my challenge to you, all right, is that you already know the answers to these questions. You don't need us, just because we might be in an elevated space, you don't need us to tell you these things. If, if you got it, you got it. And if you don't got it, build it inside of yourself. But be intentional about your development, be intentional about the way you go about how you handle your business, 
because it would translate into how you handle everything else that you got going on. It'll translate in how you follow up. It'll translate in how you speak to private lenders. It'll translate in your personal relationships. All right, so I would encourage you to get on YouTube and look up time blocking and take it serious and actually implement it in your life if you want to do the things that you say you want to do. Hey, man, Kobe Bryant said something, man. Rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. He has said something that always stuck with me. He just said this, what did it mean to you? You know what I mean? You know, he was talking to, um, I forgot which basketball player was it. You know what I mean? He was asking him, what did it mean to you? You know what I mean? That's why I'm here I'm here early at the gym. It's that simple. Right. You know, it didn't mean something to you. I know when I was on my journey, it, it wasn't about me having analysis paralysis. It was more about, man, I ain't got no choice. You know, my back on the wall. When you're back on the wall completely, that means you got to make something happen, man. No excuses. This is the wrong time to not take action. I won't, I won't yeah. want to be a person not taking action right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you get hit. You know what I mean? We know, listen, you know why it's so exciting every day now? Because I know people motivated. It ain't even no question. You just got to find the people that's motivated. I got six acquisition managers now. We just hired a new guy. Man, listen, when we break out the huddle, it's time to go fish. and We bringing it back. So, you know, I want y'all to remember that, man. Do not, man, listen, you ain't going to die. Ain't nobody going to die from making a call. I ain't seen that happen one time. <laughs> Hey, listen, I, lo I love that, guys, because it really – I'm going to tell you all what I told my team in our, 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 our huddle up this morning, all right? All you got to do is make the call. See, the, the difference is you got to get past thinking about money all the time. So mm -hmm. what happens is you on the dollar, and all you can think about is I'm talking to a seller. I finally got somebody to say they open to an offer. And, and so your mind just goes straight to trying to get a deal done, trying to make some money, trying to do this, trying to do that. You got to respect the process, all right? You got you to gotta listen to your calls after you make your calls. Figure out how you can get better in your development, how you can get better at the things that you're doing. That, that's what's going to make or break you. Because when you start focusing on, uh, you know, how to, how to make a dollar and hey, somebody said they open to an offer and you just lose train of thought, now you're not paying attention to what their motivation is. Now you're not making sure you're following the framing of the script to pull the information. That your, your job on the phone is to be an information gatherer. That's your job. All right. The job is to gather information to gather as much information as possible yeah. and then figure out how to craft an offer to properly assist the seller. All right. So you can't think about money just because somebody says they're open to an offer. You got to work through the process, guys. Yeah. I love that. I love it. Yes, sir. All right. I'm about to hop on this call. Mahogany. Uh, did you, I didn't see you put that. Okay. There it is right there. Boom. All right, so Juan Benavides. And she just put some notes in there for you. Yep, I, I just saw that right now. Okay, all right. Cool, cool. I'm calling the first number. Uh, Q, Q, T, L, O, these. So, so uh, I have a couple numbers. So if y'all sit tight, let, just let me. All right, hey, fellas, that one hey, fellas, I'm just going to the restroom real quick. I'm coming right back. All right. All right. All right, so that's the first one. Okay, let's run this next one. Two one zero two seven four eight two eight seven. Oh. Hey, Juan. Yes. Hey, this is Aaron. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No problem. I've been Steph Curry with the shot. Had to make sure he was muted. I'm here. I'm here. How you doing, Juan? Good, good. I'm glad to hear that. It's it's crazy out, out there. My my name is Aaron. You had talked with my one of my uh, my business colleagues, Mahogany, about a, a property that you're you're uh, you may consider selling. Mahogany, I need the address, please. I need the address. My name is is Aaron, and and my my colleague's name. Oh, it, it's uh it, it was Mahogany. She she uh she had uh, called you about a property. Uh, it is, uh, 
9218 Rue, uh, I don't know how to exactly how to pronounce it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, are you sure you don't want to sell that one to me? <laughs> okay, all right. Well, well talk, talk to me about it. sounds like so you got another one that you're interested in selling? Okay. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, I love that area. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's like right around almost uh, three hundred thousand. Okay. Okay. So. Yeah, it's uh, it's an it's the house is like it's an older house, but it's been completely remodeled. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's been a rent. It's a rent. Well, see, he bought it. it was, it's a rental property. Um, he fixed it up. It mm -hmm. didn't have any central air in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he put central air and heat in it. Uh, had the house level. Uh -huh. uh, had the foundation. Had the foundation already done. Mm -hmm. uh, put a new fence up around the property. And uh, what else was it that he did? Uh, he did everything. We did remodeled the kitchen, we did the bathrooms. Uh, I, I, I think it's a three bedroom house. Okay. No garage. Okay. No garage, and it's across the street from an elementary school. Okay. And do you have the address? That way I can kind of get some numbers together before we talk again? Uh, I don't have the address right on hand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I can tell you, it's 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 uh, uh, it's off of Gramercy. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I know that area. I'm very familiar with that area. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So, um, I'm not sure what the address is, mm -hmm. but I know it's off of Gramercy. You know that that property out those properties out there went up in value, mm -hmm. big times. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And oh yeah. I absolutely. My buddy that's a realtor bought a house over there. Another friend of mine, he bought his house over there right next to the railroad track. He bought it cheap. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you sure you want to buy it that next to the railroad track? Mm -hmm. I know, because I was a kid. When I used to, when I was growing up, my dad had a house that was uh, uh, like, what is it, like 500 yards? Oh, wow. <laughs> From the railroad crossing. Good night. Yeah, that's a, you know, and it was a, it was pretty soon sort of like about two acres mm. that he had. <laughs> but back then, that was in the sixties and seventies. Mm -hmm. You know, when he bought that property when he was still alive. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, you know, I know what trains are like. And back then, the trains were very loud. Yeah, yeah. You know, especially at the crossings. You know, they had to blow their damn horn. Yeah. You know, and when they went through there. You know, me as a kid, I never got to sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can only imagine. I used to, I used to live in a trailer house ne right next to the, uh, right next to the railroad myself. So, so I, I could, I completely understand that. Yeah, you know, but he bought that thing. And he's a happy camper. Yeah, you know, he's got like three properties out in Stone Oak. You mm. know, and uh, yeah, you know, so he's running those out. I'm mm -hmm. like, well, you know, I see here get better. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. You're a smart man. Well, Juan, but before I let you go, I, I wanted to, uh, I, I wanted to ask you something. I'm, I'm looking over my file right now, and, and of course, this is between uh -huh. me and you. I, I'm a, I, I'm, I'm a real estate professional myself, and, and I purchase property, and, and uh, we, you know, we, we, we help a lot of people in the community. I, I wanted to ask you. I see here on my file that, that. Uh, your your property was was in pre foreclosure at at one time. Uh, you know, is everything okay with that, or are you are you? Uh... Uh, well, yeah. Right now, you know, everything's on a freeze. Okay. Due to uh, the government, and plus, uh, my attorneys went after went after Wells Fargo. Mm. Um, you know, and that's been this has been an ongoing thing for about three years mm. with Wells Fargo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and every time I 
how they, they put it up on the block, uh, I get a little I get a little bit more mad at them. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. start throwing crap at them. Yeah. And they don't like that. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I kind of I kind of pissed in their Cheerios because I got the house really cheap mm-hmm. and the property value went up. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, they stuck me on a stupid program that I didn't want. Yeah. And I didn't sign for it, and that's where the lawyers got it. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was Wells Fargo that did this to you? Yeah. Hey, screw Wells those guys. That's what I said. That's what I said. I said, screw those some bitches. And I told, I told the attorney, I said, look, I said, uh, I said, you know, I said, I didn't sign any documents. Mm-hmm. I said, they just threw me on this disaster relief plan, told me not to worry about it, mm-hmm. but they would put it in the rears. Yeah. And I says, and I'm like, well, really? And then when those three months came up, they hit me with it. Oh, well, you got to pay it all off and blah, 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 this and this. You know, and I'm like, no, ma'am, I'm not. I'm not. You all know, promised me this was going to be in the rears. And I says, and, you know, now you're, you're coming up with this. How you much know? are they and saying how, this, how much are they saying that, that, that you owe right now, uh, Juan? Oh, <laughs> let's see, 72000 70, My father runs 76000 now. Hmm. Okay. You know, okay. in late payments, because they won't accept my money. Mm-hmm. I even had it paid up to date. They sent the money back. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's crazy. That's crazy. You know, yeah, th- this so is not the first time. The, yeah, this is not the first time I've heard that happen in, in this area with, with Wells Fargo. I'm, I'm not talking. I'm not trying to talk bad about their business, but but man, you know, if enough people if enough people call your phone saying that the aliens are outside, you, you're gonna be looking outside. So, oh, yeah. so, so I, yeah, I can, I can only imagine. So, so let me ask you this one, uh, uh, you know, so, so right now we're looking, we're looking at, uh, you know, forbearance and, and a little mercy on the government, you know, with these lenders until about May, what do you, what are you looking to do whenever the, the forbearance, uh, it, it, it ends? What, what do you, do you have a game plan? Oh, I'm, or? I'm, I'm, I'm doing after them. I'm not stopping. Mm-hmm. I'm not stopping. I'm following a lawsuit against them. Okay. I'm suing them because they stuck me on something I didn't want to get stuck on, and then they refused my money when I tried to pay them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, you know, I've got all these investors all, all tell me all these things. Yeah. You know, oh, well, you got to sell, you got to do this. Mm-hmm. You know what I tell them? What's that? I ain't got to do a goddamn thing. Mm-hmm. You know, but sit there and wait, mm-hmm. and people who wait, good things will happen. And I've been sitting on this thing, and I've been waiting and waiting. And then on top of that, not only that I'm suing Wells Fargo, I'm also suing a, a, a guy that claimed to be an attorney and posted filed this lawsuit back in November mm. and found out he, he didn't have a license. Oh, and snap. And he hired this lawyer to do this job, and he didn't pay the guy. And he wouldn't give the guy any of my information. Snap. So what I called started hunting for him. Uh, I told him, I said, well, I got your name on all these documents. Yeah, yeah. You know, and mm-hmm. I said, and y'all, I paid y'all already, you know, what was it? Uh, I, I paid him $4,600 mm-hmm. already. Mm-hmm. You know, and I said, and then I said, I get all these calls from, this, you know, all these realtors and investors wanting to buy my house. I said, I shouldn't even get getting these calls. Yeah, I said, you yeah. were paid up in full. So, you so know, let me, said, let me ask you, let me ask you this one, because, uh, you know, I, I I, I'm I'm interested in in purchasing the property. Are, are you not interested in selling it at all? At all. Okay. Okay. Well. Well. Hey. I I appreciate you and and you have my information. If you if you ever decide to to sell or or you just need any help or advice, we, you know we're we're a great resource. We do we do a a lot yeah. of a lot of deals a month. If you ever need anything, don't hesitate to call me or or my my colleague okay. Mahogany. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll let you know, you know, like I said, if it comes down to the worst, brother, mm-hmm. I'll tell you this. Uh, one of my best friends that, that that's also that, that owns that property out there mm-hmm. off of Gramercy, mm-hmm. he offered to, to get two of, two of his investors mm-hmm. to buy the house and just pay him for two years, you mm-hmm. know, and then just get it refinanced somewhere else. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. See? So, yeah, you know, so I, I have no intention to sell. I got a little boy with special needs. That's the reason why I'm keeping the house. Mm-hmm. I'm a single parent and I'm mm-hmm. raising it there. So okay, okay, uh, that makes sense. Well, well, yeah. I'll say this. I'll say this. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't at least throw this out there. I'd love for you to remember me. My name, my name okay. is is Aaron. My my partner's name is Mahogany. Um, 
if it does come – what's that? Okay. Okay. I work for, yeah, I work for a lot of realtors, and I'm trying to remember. You know, I work for I work for uh, Keller Williams. I do a lot of repair work for Keller Williams. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I'll be I'll be honest with you. We're we're kind of a mom and pop um, uh, organization. We 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 purchase properties cash, and that and that's what I wanted to share with you. That yeah. you know, if if in any situation you did want to sell, we could purchase the property yeah, cash. I, I, yeah. If, if, yeah, if I, if I was going to sell it cash, uh, I'd have to have at least 225 for it, cash. Okay. You know, I, I'm not going to go any less than that. That's a four-bedroom house with a two-car garage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not a three-bedroom. It's a four-bedroom. Okay, okay. For sure. I completely understand that. Yeah. If, if anything, if anything happens, um, definitely reach out to us. If you need help or if you, if you want an offer, we can make something happen for you, okay? All right, man. You have yourself a great day. Yes, sir. And you stay safe out there. Mm-hmm. Bye. Yeah, that, that's that's just not that's just not a, a a qualified lead. I could, but you know what? I'm not mad. I'm not mad that you had me call it mahogany because even based on the information that you gave me, that um, it was definitely worth the 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 follow up. But he already he is in a distressed situation, but he already has his own way out and his own resources that he's gonna take right now. So so he he's not a distressed seller that's motivated to sell. Um, because he said under no circumstances is he even trying to consider at all. So, so that, that's kind of the situation with that one. Um, I'll say this, I wanted uh, j just to piggyback. I think, you know, in, in, in the mentorship program that I'm doing right now, I have a whole bunch of data and I wanted to piggyback off of what Chris and, and Keith had mentioned. I have a whole bunch of data from, from hundreds of people who have, who have come through and many of them, the, the amount of success they've had is amazing. And what I find the biggest reason why most people don't succeed in this business comes down to procrastination. It's exactly what you just said, Raimundo. It's analysis paralysis. And they love following the personalities. And you should follow a Chris Jefferson. You should follow a Keith Flores. You know what I mean? You should because these people are going to give you the, they're going to give you the game. However, after you listen to, to one of their videos, go out and do it right? Procrastination is the, biggest, is the biggest thing. And I, and I wanted to read something. I even pulled it up. This is something that I shared with, with, uh, with, with my people today. And look at this quote. He said, th this man said this, Orison Sweat, he said this, every great man has become great. Every successful man has succeeded. Look at this, in proportion as he's he has confined his powers into one particular channel. And so all of the power that you have, all of the energy and resources that you have, if you focus it on one goal and actually put it to action, there, it's, there's absolutely, it's inevitable for you, to, for you to fail ultimately, but you gotta put it to work. I just wanted to say that real quick, Chris and Keith, how do y'all wanna wrap up? Cause we got like five more minutes. Yeah, man, so uh, definitely, man, this is a perfect opportunity, man, that we want to do for y'all again. Uh, we just want to get on here and just give y'all the real deal. You know, reality of it is 90% of people pretty much are not going to be motivated to sell. But I think the most important thing you have to take away of this is what to do when things don't work out. You know, that's something that people don't talk talk about as much, but that's something that we just wanted to display. You know what I mean? So I just want to talk to you guys about that. Yeah, man. Uh, look, guys, properly vet, vet your sellers. I think that should be the biggest takeaway from you know, the first call we did, the call that we're doing right now, is fully work through your leads, fully vet out your leads, and determine whether or not they are making an offer now, they should go in your make an offer now bucket, or they should go in your follow up bucket. Mm -hmm. You should have scripting and processes in place where you, where you can work through and get that information. So you guys, one, here's the thing to, to understand. Every single one of us, no matter who is the better cold caller or whatever, that really doesn't even matter, right? Here, here's what does matter. The framing of every call that we each made is the exact same, mm -hmm. all right? We're, pulling, we're, we're going to pull the, all the exact same information. We're working through building rapport. We're finding out what type of repairs have been to the property. We're finding out what the motivation is. So what's the pain point? What is, what is, what's the gain? What are they trying to gain from selling? You have to work through those things on phone calls to figure out who is a true seller 
and who isn't. So you, you got to be willing to do those things. Uh, Raymundo, I see you got something in here uh, saying, uh, you know, fear is real. Uh, I respect you being vulnerable, man, and, and, yep. and saying that. All right. Yep. Um, there's nothing to fear, though. Yeah. Right. So at the end of the day, it's like the, everything going on with the market right now. I, had, I was talking with Max Maxwell on the phone earlier this morning. We were having a conversation. And it's like I said to him earlier, man, I, I could go completely broke. All right. I'm not, I have no fear of that whatsoever with whatever the economy is going on and this, that, and the other. It's not a fear for me. I can, because as soon as the, the timing is right, I can run it right back up in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. so, so there's no fear for me with that. Yeah. There's, there's no purpose to have fear because you got to place, you got to look at wherever you're coming from. Yeah. I know, I know where I, I know the circumstances from which I came. So, so there's no, fear Chris. Have, yeah, there's no, there's no fear to have at all because anything, but going back to that, is a win. And even if I go back to that, I don't got a fear of it because I know how to come out of it. Yeah. So, so I have nothing, I have nothing to actually fear. See, like fear, see, this is a mental exercise. See, fear is just, fear is just in your head. It's the voice in your head that you listen to and you don't need to listen to it. All right. So you're being fearful, but what do you have to lose by taking action? If you take action and it doesn't work, all right, then you're just in the exact same spot that you're in right now. If you take action and it does work, then you change your life, you change the trajectory of anybody in your family life after you. So, so what's the point of having any type of fear? Yeah. Yeah. And like I love you said, it. man, uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, fear could be the reason why, you know, your family can be held back generations because nobody broke that fear. But why not you be that, you know, person to break all that fear, man? It's really simple. Yeah. Yeah. And I want, I want to say this really quick. I'm about to post a link in the comment section right now. Those of you that are wrong, I think, I think it, it's a major testimony to, to who y'all are and where y'all are going to be at the end of this, at the end of this, this whole Corona thing, because uh, uh, the fact that y'all are putting in the work right now, you know what I mean? You're investing in yourselves. It's a beautiful thing. So I want to ask something of y'all. I'm about to post a link right here in the, in the, the comment, the comment section. If you found any value in our first session and this round two, if you found any value in it whatsoever, can you please type one in the comment section? Just mm -hmm. type one in the comment section. That's any all value all. at all. There's love. We appreciate that, y'all. We appreciate that. So, so check this out. I'm going to ask something from y'all, okay? We're going to ask something from, from y'all. If you found value and you typed one in the comment section, I'm about to post the, the, this, this link in the comments. Would you do us a favor? We're kind of on a mission, y'all. We're on a mission to help as many people as possible because right now there's more fear and uncertainty in the marketplace than we have ever, a lot of us have ever experienced unless you're a Chris Jefferson or, 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 or someone who, who's been in this industry during a crisis like this, during a recession like this. And, and because of that, we, 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 we are born leaders. And so we want to pave the way and let people know that, look, it is possible for you to continue to find success. Our companies are continuing to find success. Is it difficult? Yeah. Is it scary? A little bit, right? But, but we're not stopping, okay? And we want, to, we want to be that light for a lot of people. And so we're doing another seminar tomorrow, another webinar tomorrow, okay? Uh, a lot of you are, are already vets, okay? But if you found value Please take this link that I just posted in there. Dang, I don't know why I posted it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah, can you do that, bro? Can you do that? Take the link that Chris is going to post in there. Be extra loud on social media after we get off this call. Go, right? Go screenshot it and tag us, guys. Screenshot it. Tag us on IG. Tag us on Facebook. Right? Take the link. Take the link that Chris uh, just just uh, put. Encourage other people to hop on for tomorrow because we we in the end in the end one of my mentors says something and it really resonated with me. He said in the end during this time people are not gonna people are not gonna remember you for how much money you took from them, but they will remember how 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 you served them, and that's what we want to do. That's what we want to do. We want to serve. And so help us do that, y'all. We appreciate you. We're going to go ahead and, and tune out. Chris, Keith, any last words before we, we finish off, man? I've had a blast with you guys. Nah, yes, man, sir. I had a blast, man. It was great. Much love to everybody on here, man. Shout out to everybody that showed up 
for the for the free call, not just yeah. the one that they pay for, man. We had yeah. 100, over 125 people on the first call. Right now, we got 39 people on the call right now. Very man. telling. Man, shout out to y'all, man. Y'all are the real winners for being on this call right now. Uh, that, that shows me and tells me that you guys are fully committed to the process and getting better. Uh, I love to see that, man. That's why I always talk about how it took me two years to do my first deal uh, because it took me time to get into the process of that commitment. Uh, so salute to y'all, man. Much love. Yeah, man. It's, uh, it's a blessing. It's an honor, man, for us to serve y'all. I know a lot of times it seems like that, you know, y'all, you know, doing everything for us, man, but, you know, we serving y'all, you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, I mean, y'all initially paid the 47, but just think about it, if you could pick up a gym and close a deal, we're talking about 5, 10, 20, 30,000. That's a whole different level of return. At that point, you don't even want to count the 47 no more. So we just <laughs> glad to be able to just, you know, get the opportunity to serve y'all, man, to show y'all not only how a good call is, but what to do on the bad call, because I think that's where the, the fear come in that with people, what happens if the call go bad? And uh, we just displayed to you guys, resort all options. And uh, you guys invest in yourself, man. So you're already ahead of the curve. And I uh, just want to say, man, we appreciate y'all. Share the link if y'all think it'll be viable to somebody else. You know, we all guys who cold call, we all got different companies. You know, we all show each other's love. Because at the end of the day, as long as people, you know, need help, we all, we, we all of us will be able to serve. So we appreciate you guys. Yeah, yeah. A a Alex did bring out a good point. He said, he said, uh, he said, um, I think a lot of people would have, a lot more people would have came, but it, it ended up in the, in the, uh, in the spam folder. So it's so, okay. Well, we, we won't, we won't hold that against, you know, if that was the case, if that was the case, but, but even so y'all are here and, and it's an opportunity for y'all. So. Yeah. Well, I'll let Quentin get that, get that figured out. All right. All right. And then, uh, uh a lot of people have asked this question real quick before we hop off. Um, can we get the the recording of this uh how do y'all feel about that what, what should we do with that yeah i think we do we have to get it from quentin yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll let quentin know and then and then we'll we'll share that out with everybody all right all right y'all much love we appreciate y'all tuning in we're gonna go ahead and end this and uh and make yes, sure y'all are loud about this y'all all right chris keith much love all right, all right, deuce